Welcome back to the channel, party people. My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to make a WordPress website step-by-step -step with WordPress and the Divi theme. Now, this is a long-awaited video, and I'm really excited to bring you guys this video today. Now, this video is for pretty much anyone who wants to start a website for the very first time, and it's also for designers who want to improve their design skills and learn how to use the Divi theme. The Divi theme is the most popular WordPress theme in the world. It's installed on more than 3 million websites because it's very easy to use and completely drag and drop. So after today, you'll learn how to make professional websites with WordPress and Divi. We've also invited some of the top Divi professionals in the world with established web design agencies to give you guys design tips and tricks on how to make some really creative websites with Divi. And the Divi theme does have a very interesting story. Divi came out in 2013 and it was groundbreaking. It just started out as a one-man operation and slowly progressed into a small company. With the Divi theme, you can build any type of website you wanted from their back-end builder. In 2018, Divi developed their front-end visual builder, which enables users to build their website visually on the front-end, making it very easy to build a website. Every year, Divi is constantly adding in new templates and innovative features to really push the limits of web design. And as of 2022, Divi is now the most active WordPress theme in the world with more than 3 million active installs worldwide. Now, before we begin, let me first show you guys the website we'll be making today, along with some free templates that we have made specially for you guys in this video. So today I'll be showing you guys how to build websites using Divi. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to get started by creating this website. It's a really nice looking website. We spent a few weeks creating it for you and I'll walk you through how we created each section of this website step by step using this drag and drop builder. With this tutorial, you can make any type of website you want. You can create a portfolio website, a business website, a blog, a cryptocurrency website. You can build any type of website you want in this tutorial with no restrictions. Now, I did mention this was a drag and drop builder, so let me give you all a one minute overview about this builder and just show you all how it works. Let's say, for example, I wanted to change this text right here. I would simply go ahead and click on the text and then type in whatever text I would want. So learn how to make a website. And also, let's say, for example, I wanted to drag and drop elements, right? I can take this red text right here and I can drag it below this. And if I also want to duplicate modules, I can even click on this little duplicate button, and then I can take this and I can drag it somewhere else. And for this section here, let's say I wanted to change this text. I'll put in something like why we are so popular. And I can go ahead and take this elements and I can drag it on top of this one. And I can do the same thing for this elements. I'll go ahead and drag it right there. And then I can go ahead and take this button. I can duplicate it twice. And I'll take this button and I'll drag it below these elements just so that we don't have to make the button all over again. We can also add space or padding to any part of the website. So for example, if I wanted to make more space right here, I can drag and drop more space. And I can do this also for the entire column as well. So I can actually do this for every element on the actual website. You guys can also choose to add a background color to any part of the website if you want. So over here, click on this gear icon click on background, and then I can actually uh, put in any background color that I choose to have on the website. I can even add gradient colors. So if you guys do want to add like gradient colors, which is a mix of two different colors, you guys can go ahead and add those there. You guys can also change like the gradient type and also the direction as well. So if you want like a different style gradients or you want to change the direction, you guys can do that with this page builder. But as you guys can tell, this looks pretty terrible, right? So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to undo what I just did. And there we go, I'm back to square one. So as you guys can tell, using Divi is pretty simple, right? It's a very fluid builder. It's very visual. And also the drag and drop features of this builder are really simple to use and they're really easy to understand. So today in this video, I'll walk you guys through on how to use Divi step by step. So I do want to say, guys, I'm sorry I haven't made this video sooner. It did take me quite a bit of time to make, but I really do hope you guys enjoy it. Also, we have timestamps in the description of this video. So feel free to, you know, jump around to any part of the video. Also, if you feel like I'm going too fast or too slow, there is a gear icon at the bottom right of the screen that you guys can use to speed up or slow down the video. And with that said, we're going to go ahead and build your WordPress website in five simple steps. In step one, I'll show you how to get your domain and hosting. A domain is the web address for your website, like mywebsite.com. We also do have a special discount available in the description that you guys will only find on this YouTube channel. In step two, I'll explain the general settings of WordPress. 
we will then go ahead and download the Divi theme and start building the websites. I'll introduce you guys to the builder and explain how to use this drag and drop builder step by step. In step three, we'll design the websites. In step three, I'll teach you guys how to design the website using Divi. I'll also show you how to adjust the websites, upload images, add modules, and make your website from scratch. In step four, I'll teach you guys how to use the Divi advanced features. Our special guest will also walk you through some really awesome tricks with Divi as well. Step five, the Divi theme builder. In step five, I'll introduce you guys to the Divi theme builder. This allows you to have custom headers and footers, custom 404 pages, and other various custom pages that you can make using the Divi builder. In step six, I'll introduce you guys to the Divi marketplace. There's many additional resources like plugins, which can add more features to your existing website. There's also several pre-made templates that you guys can use, and I'll show you how to import those on your website. There's also something called Divi child themes. I'll explain what those are and how to install them on your WordPress websites. So now let's go to step one. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. Uh, this week alone, I've had zero downtime with Name Hero, so you guys will have a reliable website. And also, my websites load at under one second with Name Hero. So we do test these servers to make sure that you guys do get the best web hosting possible. Now, once you guys are here, you'll click on Get Started Now, and then it'll bring you to four different pricing options. So we have the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. Now, I personally recommend the Plus Cloud if you guys are just getting started out, like if you're just getting your feet wet for the very first time. But for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, I would definitely go with the Turbo Cloud because with the Turbo Cloud, you guys do get the new NVMe storage, which does just give you a little bit more performance with your website. So you'll go ahead and pick a package that works best for you and your budget. And then once you guys uh, figure your package out, you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, and here you're going to enter in your domain name. So this is the name of your new website. So uh, portfoliowebsite.com or you know mynewswebsite.com or whatever whatever niche that you're building, you'll go ahead and put it here. So I'll just put it in tutorialdomain1.com and see if that's available. All right, cool, it's available. Now I know it takes time to figure out the domain of your website. So you know, give it some time. You know, it, it does take some thought for your new websites. Uh, once you guys figure it out, you guys will click on continue. All right, cool. So next we have the billing cycle and we have three years, two years and one year. Now, personally, I'd recommend one year. You guys do get a large discount and this does give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. However, if you guys are feeling very confident, I would recommend going with the two or three year plan. You guys do get the uh, deal the longer you sign up for. So uh, it really depends on your budget. But uh, once you guys select a billing cycle, we'll scroll down. And uh, I don't recommend any of these upsells personally. You can do this with free plugins. So yeah, you guys don't need those. And then we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once you guys select your billing cycle, we will then click on continue. All right, next we have the domain configuration. Now I personally recommend the ID protection guys. This will protect your personal information from spammers and people trying to sell you SEO packages and Viagra and all sorts of nonsense. Whenever you guys get those weird emails in your inbox, it's generally because they found your domain online. So this will actually protect you so you don't get spam in your inbox. So go ahead and click on ID protection and then click on continue. And look at that, for a year of hosting, you're paying less than $100, you're paying only 70 bucks. You guys can also go the cheaper routes and get the cheaper plan if you're on a really tight budget, but I think this is a great deal for web hosting for the entire year for this specific performance. So you guys are getting a reliable and a fast server for this price, so it's definitely worth it. So uh, go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill out your billing information here, so your first name, your last name, uh, additional information. You'll put in your password and also a support pin. So this would be the pin that uh, they would use to verify that it's you. And then also we have uh, payment methods, so you can pay with PayPal, Coinbase, which is cryptocurrency, and credit card. Here you'll go ahead and put in your payment details. And if you guys do want to get their spam or their emails, they actually send some pretty good emails, guys. I'm not gonna lie, they have some cool uh, promotional offers. You'll go ahead and check that box. And then you'll, of course, uh, agree to their terms of service, right? I'm sure you guys are all gonna read uh, this here, right? You guys are all gonna read this. I don't think anyone ever reads any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, you'll go ahead and uh, check the terms of service. And once you guys have checked out, I will meet you guys in the customer portal.
All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you want to see your payments or you want to add funds or you want to adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kind of get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on My Cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go. We have WordPress manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. So you guys can see I have many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here, you have the choose domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS, which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like your website.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure that's make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you want to build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass, guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack. And your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're going to keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not going to use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress, and this is the administrative URL. Administrative URL. So just go ahead and click on this link, and this will log you in to your website. All right, and welcome to your new WordPress dashboard. This is where all the magic happens. Now, at the time of making this video, the version is 5.9, but when you're watching this from a few months from now, it'll probably be 6.0 or higher. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, at the top right here under my blog, you'll click on visit sites. And this is your new WordPress website. It's using a default 2022 theme, but yeah, we're not gonna use that theme for this video. Now, before I go on any further, I wanna go ahead and introduce you all to some general settings and just change a small, a few options here and there just to make things run a little bit more smoother. Pretty easy, right? We got your website online and we are all ready to go. Now, in this next step, we are now going to adjust some general settings and then I'll show you guys how to uh, upload Divi to your WordPress website. It's really easy. Let's go ahead and jump back to the video. The first thing I want you guys to do over here is go on over here to users and click on profile. Now the admin scheme color, we're gonna change this to midnight, but you guys can change this to any color that you want. Like they have modern, uh, they got coffee, which looks really bland and, you know, ugh. they got this one, ugh. that one, this one's, uh, yeah, I, I like midnight. It's just easier to see on the eyes. You know, that, that's how I see it. You know, uh, now we're going to scroll down here. Here is your email. Now, whenever you guys want to adjust your email or change your email, this is where you're going to do it. This is important. If you guys forget your password for WordPress. It will be sent to this specific uh, email address. So make sure you have access to this email uh, on file. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down. Also, for those of you who want to adjust your password, you'll click on set new password. And this is where you can adjust your password to log into your WordPress website. But I'm just not gonna change it. And I'll click on update profile. All right, cool. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to adjust some of the general settings. So over here, we're gonna click on general. 
Now, for those of you who speak various languages, you can actually change the back end of WordPress. So right here, it says site language. You guys can actually change this to your native language uh, if you prefer to see everything uh, in a different language. But uh, yeah, you guys can you know change that if you guys choose to do that. I'm gonna leave mine as English because obviously I speak English. And then we'll scroll down here and click on Save Changes. All right. Now, one more thing over here on the left side, you're going to see permalinks. Go ahead and click on permalinks. Now, we're going to change this uh, common settings to post name. Now, the reason why we're going to adjust the permalink settings to post name, uh, this will actually make it so your website says like your website.com slash about us, right? Or, you know, your website.com slash contact. Not all of these numbers and random stuff because uh, this is really ugly and this is actually better for SEO practices. So make sure you have it on post name and we'll scroll down and then we'll click on save changes. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and click on dashboard. So now let me go ahead and show you guys how you can log in and log out of your WordPress website. So you can pretty much work on your website from any location. I'll go ahead and go over here and click on log out. I'll then get rid of all this uh, permalink up here and press enter. So this would be your domain, right? So this is your current domain. You'll go to your domain and then you'll type in dash WP dash admin and then press enter. You'll then go ahead and put in your username or the email that you guys use sign up with WordPress along with your password. And once you enter all that information, you'll then click on login. And that's it. That's how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress website. All right, guys. So in the next step, we are now going to download and purchase the Divi theme. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase the Divi theme. And this is elegantthemes.com. And here we have two different pricing options, right? We have the yearly access and we also have the lifetime access. Now Divi offers the best license in the industry and I'll explain why. So for $89, you guys can install Divi on as many domains as you guys would like with no restrictions. Divi will also give you guys updates. Now Divi always has constant new feature updates where they add new uh, JavaScript features or new WooCommerce options or something like that. You guys will get all of those features in this plan. You guys also do get unlimited support for all of your websites. So if you guys do get fatal errors or something's wrong, or if you guys get like uh, glitches or something, Elegant Themes will fix all of the problems for you. And you guys can use the theme on as many domains as you guys would like. So you can put it on uh, any number of domains and they will give you support and updates for all those domains. They also do give you a 30 day money back guarantee for any reason, right? So there doesn't have to be a reason if you don't like it or you just want your money back, no problem. Elegant Themes will actually pay you guys back. Now they also have a lifetime access, which is what I have. Now other page builders in the industry do not offer lifetime access because it's a very competitive price, right? So uh, with this plan, you guys will pay a one-time fee and you guys get lifetime updates. You guys get lifetime support and you also get lifetime unlimited usages for as many domains as you guys would like. You also do get a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you guys watch this video and you feel like it's just not for you, no problem. You guys can always get your money back and you guys also do just pay a one time fee. So you never pay a subscription. This is a one time payment. Now you guys also do get access to all of their website packs. So uh, they do have tons and tons of layout packs. In fact, they have over 1900 layouts and you guys do get all this included with the purchase and they have some really beautiful demos and I'll walk you guys through how to set all these up in this video. All right, so let's go back over here. Now go ahead and pick a plan that works best for you. You guys can go with the yearly access or go with what I have, which is the lifetime access. Once you guys pick a plan, you guys will then go over here and click on sign up today. All right, and you're gonna go ahead and create your account. So you're gonna put your first name, your last name, your email, your social security number. I'm just joking, guys. They don't ask for that. It's a joke, <laughs> all right? They don't, they don't ask for that. Uh, but yeah, you'll go ahead and fill out this information. You'll click all the buttons. You'll click all the check boxes. And once you guys do that, I will then meet you in your customer portal. All right, and this is your members area. So once you guys purchase Divi and go through the checkout process, you will be brought to your members area. Now, right here, we have two different options, right? We have Divi theme and we also have the Divi Builder plugin. The Divi theme comes with the own theme and the visual page builder. The Divi Builder plugin is just the, uh, the visual builder, which you guys can use on other WordPress themes. But I find that the Divi theme with the visual builder is a lot more smoother. There's less bugs and it integrates perfect with each other. So right here, you'll click on download the Divi theme. 
All right, and once you guys do that, uh, you guys can go ahead and upload this theme to your uh, current WordPress website. Now, really quick, uh, just to let you guys know, um, you guys will need to enter in your account uh, API to your website. Let me go ahead and show you guys my subscriptions here. So my subscription, I do have the lifetime membership. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a BSer. You know, I really do have this product. <laughs> yeah, I've had it for quite some time. Uh, you guys will need your API key to activate Divi onto your website. And I'll show you guys how to do that in just a bit. But first, let's go back to our current WordPress websites. Now, once you guys are here, we will go to appearance and click on themes. We'll then go ahead and click on add new. And then we'll click on upload theme and click on browse. We are now going to uh, upload the divi.zip folder. So the folder that we downloaded from the Elegant Themes website, we are now going to upload this to our current WordPress website. So go ahead and click on divi and click on open and then click on install now. And now it's uploading divi to your WordPress website. And now we're gonna click on activate. All right, cool, awesome. Now we have the DV theme successfully installed on our current website. Now, uh, before we go on any further, I just wanna make sure that you guys do activate your uh, license code with Divi. You guys don't need it to make Divi run, but then again, it does give you guys support and updates for future reference. So right here, go ahead and click on Divi. Now over here, you're gonna see updates. So go ahead and click on updates. You're gonna enter in your username right here, the one that you created for Elegant Themes. And then you're also gonna enter in your API key from Elegant Themes as well. You can find this information by going to your account right here, clicking on account details. This right here would be your username. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it. And then to find your API key, we'll go ahead and click on this and click on API keys. So here is the actual API key. What I'm gonna do here is click to copy and then go back to our website. And then I'll just paste that API key in right there. So I'll go ahead and paste it there and then click on save changes. All right, cool. So now our website is linked up with Elegant Themes so we can receive support and updates uh, with our website. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna now make some pages, right? So if we go to our website right here under visit sites, uh, you guys will see that we do have some pages here and also you guys can see how the website has changed in appearance, right? It looks a little bit different. So we're gonna add some pages and also create a menu. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to our dashboard. Right here on the left side, you're gonna see pages. Click on all pages. Now we have these two sample pages, but we don't need these pages. So I'm gonna click on this little check mark and then we're gonna move these to trash and click on apply. So we don't need those pages. You know, they're, they're, they're gone, they're history. Now right here under pages, We'll click on add new and we'll close this little box. And for the title, this will be our home page, right? Home page, publish and publish. All right. Now on the right side, it's going to say add new page. Click on add new page. And this will be like the about us page, right? So the about us, publish and publish. Add a new page right here. We're going to add the services page, right? Services, publish and publish. Add a new one here. And then maybe the last one will be like the contact us page, right? Contact us page and publish and publish. All right, so we made these pages, but uh, if you go to our website right now, here, click on this little W icon and go to visit sites, um, you're gonna see that this is kind of, uh, it's, it's not arranged properly, right? So we have like the services, we have this other home. So we need to go ahead and adjust the menu. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to dashboard, go to appearance, and click on menus. We are now gonna create a menu. So this will be like the main menu, right? Main menu, primary menu, whatever, you know? And then I'll click on create menu. So what kind of pages do I want on this menu? Well, on the left side, we have most recent and we have view all. I wanna click on all of these right here. So home, about, contact, home, and services. We do have two homes and I'll explain why in just a bit but just click on add to menu. Now this right here is a custom link. So uh, this is just a custom link created by default. So I wanna get rid of this custom link. So to get rid of something on this, just click on the little arrow and click on remove. And then we can adjust this, right? So we can have the home, the about, the contact there, and the services, like just like that. And this is the primary menu, right? And I wanna save this menu. 
All right, cool. So now if I go to my website up here and click on visit sites, you guys will see that the menu has uh, been arranged properly. So we have the home, the about, the services, and the contact us page. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign this home page as our default home page that visitors visit when they first visit the website. Because right now, if they actually visit our website, you can see that they're brought to this uh, random custom link here. This is like a post. And I want them to go to our home page as the very first page when they visit the website, right? Makes sense. So let's do that. Up here under my blog, we'll click on the theme customizer. We'll come back to the theme customizer a little bit later. I don't use it too much, <laughs> I'll be honest, uh, maybe for like your menu or something, but the, the theme customizer is a little dated because the page builder does most of the work designing your website. But uh, down here under home page, we have settings. Here we have your home page displays. Click on a static page and then select your home page to the actual home page. So what I'm telling the website to do is saying, I want this home page to be the actual home page of the website. And then click on publish. And then we can close the theme customizer. And now we're ready to start building out the WordPress website. All right, you guys ready? At the top right here, you'll see enable visual builder. Go ahead and click on enable visual builder. All right, congratulations. We have now uploaded Divi and we are now ready to start designing the WordPress website. Now in this next section, I'll be showing you how to use Divi, right? So uh, we'll start using modules, we'll add background colors, we'll make it look like a real website. I also do have images for all of you in the description below of this video. We also will be giving you guys demo templates a little bit later uh, in the video, but I first want to show you all how to use the Divi Builder, explain what modules are and how to uh, you know make columns and stuff like that. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to step three and start designing the website using Divi. All right, so once you guys enable the builder, you'll first be prompted to build from scratch, choose a pre-made layout or clone an existing page. Now Divi also has a lot of cool pre-made templates, but before we jump into the templates, let's first talk about how to use the builder and elements. So let's go ahead and build this from scratch right here. So right here, just click on build from scratch. Now, if you take a look at my previous uh, website right here, I want you guys to visualize something here. We really only have uh, two columns, right? We have one column and we have two columns. So let's go ahead and make a two column row, right? And the first thing that we wanna do is insert a text module, right? So just taking a look here really quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and make you guys visualize. We have a text module, an icon, a text, a text, and a button. And that's pretty much it. All right, and once you guys enter the text module, you'll then see that uh, we now have the text settings. On this little box right here, you guys can first, you can add it to the side of the screen like that, or you guys can make it bigger, and then you can also adjust the size of this uh, at any time right here. I would leave it like this, because with this, it actually makes it so you can see how the website will look in preview, which makes a lot more sense. But uh, you guys can go ahead and type in your content here. So this would be your content. Right, this would be your content. Now the content section has a lot of different options, right? You can make this link somewhere. So if someone clicks on this, you can uh, insert like a link, like mywebsite.com or something like that. Uh, you can also add like a background and you can also add in your own admin label for your actual modules. The design tab is where you essentially design it, right? So this controls the sizing, the colors, and also the fonts. You'll see over here how we just have this red font. So let's go ahead and change the color really quick. I'm gonna click on the text right here. And now we have the text fonts. I believe I'm using, I think it's Jost, right? But you can go ahead and select a um, font that you choose. A really good one is Poppins Bold, which I really do like, and also Lado. Lado, Roboto, Poppins Bold, and um, those are my favorite ones, to be honest. But the ones that we're using for this specific demo is Jost, right? J-O-S-T. And here you have different options, right? You can make this thin to have like that really nice, elegant layout, or you can make it bold, which makes it a little bit more friendlier. And then you can choose to have it italicized and underlined and stuff like that. And then here you can uh, adjust the color. So I'll change mine to red, right? And for the text size, this is where you can adjust the size of the actual text or introduce more letter spacing. So that adds more spacing. Now I wanna reset this because I don't know which one I set it at. So right here, I'm gonna click on reset and that resets it back to the original default of what it was at. You also have some other really cool options like text shadow where you can add some sort of shadow to your text. 
Here you can also adjust the alignment. So you can move the alignment here. Now remember, it only resides within this little box right here. So it really can't go too far because over here, there's another box. So it can only go within the actual first box. And this is a shortcut. This is like an old option where you can have it light or dark, but that's only if you left it at default settings. All right, so that is pretty much the uh, text settings here in a nutshell, right? Pretty simple, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit smaller, like the actual demo, all right? And then I'll go ahead and save the changes. Now below that, we have another, um, oh no, we have a icon. So let's go ahead and grab in an icon here. So to get another element, you would just go ahead and click on the plus icon here, and then we'll type in icon, all right? Now on the icon settings, you guys can pick various uh, icons to choose from. I think I use like the YouTube play, right? I think I use that one. Let's go ahead and find it here. Or oh, a cute little heart. They got a heart. They got all sorts of really cool stuff that they add uh, quite often, but I'll go ahead and add in this little icon here. And um, on the design tab, this is where we can adjust the actual icon and the color and stuff like that. So I'm gonna change mine to red, right? But I'm gonna reduce the transparency here. Here, right here, sorry. And we're gonna go ahead and reduce the transparency. I don't want it too bright red, you know? I don't want it like, like smack in your face red. I just want it, you know, a little bit more subtle. And then we're gonna reduce the icon size. So this looks like a play button. It looks really cool, I like that. And for the alignments, I want this to the left side as well. All right, pretty simple. The next thing we're gonna do is we are now going to add in a uh, another text. So text module. Now we're gonna type in text here uh, but I actually want to uh, change this to a heading text. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Here, I'll click on text. And right here you see paragraph, right? Now I wanna change this to an actual heading text. Now what this does is this actually switches where you actually customize the actual, um, the module. But I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this text here. And then I'll just paste it in there like that. Here, I'll get rid of all that and paste it there, all right? So that's what we're working with right now, you know? It looks, it looks good. Now let's go to the design tab. Instead of going to the text right here, we are now going to go to the heading text because this is where we actually adjust the, uh, we change the heading text, right? Now, since I changed mine to H1, H1 will control all of the fonts here. If I selected it to H2, then this would be the option, and H3 and H4 and so on and so forth. But under the actual content right here, uh, you can see here how I chose the actual um, heading one paragraph. Okay, so that's what we're customizing here. So the design, heading text, H1, and now I can customize it as usual. So let's go ahead and pick my pick my go-to font here. All right, look at that. Just the, just the fonts, <laughs> you know, just the font made that thing look so much better. Like it's crazy. I want to make it bold. You know, I, I like it bold because bold is friendly. And um, I wanna make this a little bit bigger, right? So we're gonna make this just a little bit bigger. And we're gonna add a little bit of letter spacing, just like a tad, right? But this dark, I mean, I think that's a little too dark. I don't know, let's do one pixel here. Maybe we can just reduce the actual uh, strength of this black. We're gonna go ahead and, and put it down like that, just a, just a tad, you know, just a little bit there. And then we'll go ahead and check that box. Now below that, we added just a standard uh, text module, right? So over here, plus new text, bam. And this demo content, that's good enough for me. You know, I, I couldn't make it smaller, but that's good enough. And over here, plus new, and then button. And then th we'll go ahead and leave it there, right? That looks good. And this will be like, learn more, right? Learn more. Now for the design tab right here, uh, this is again, where you're going to design the button. So you can adjust the alignment here by clicking on the right, middle or left. You can adjust the actual text color and the button here. Now go ahead and click on button. And then right here, you have this option. We're going to click on use custom styles for button. This essentially allows me to customize the button. Now I want my text color white and it does disappear, but that's okay because we're going to add in a button background color. Here we have the background color. So I'm going to click on add a background color and we're going to click on red. Now this red is just a little too strong here. So again, I just wanna barely reduce the transparency here just to make it so it's not like smack dab red, you know, like that bright red, you know, like the Corvette red. Uh, and then also here we have the button border width. Now all these buttons actually have a border. You can't see it until you add a color and there it is. But I'm just gonna say, you know what? I don't want a border. I'm gonna make it transparent, 
All right, or you can just add in the actual red color there and that will actually give you uh, a little a little bit more of a border. Let's keep scrolling down here. Now we have the border radius. The border radius is very important because this basically makes it so it's not so squared, right? So for example, if you had a radius here, you're making it that circular style. And I do like circular styles. In fact, uh, studies show that people are more inclined to click on a circular button than a square button. So that's just something to consider. And also here you can adjust the actual, the button fonts, which we're using Jost, right? Or Jost, you know, I don't even know the name of this font. It's pretty embarrassing. I'm doing a video and I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, I'm gonna make it light. Actually, no, let's do regular. That was too much here. And uh, yeah, now here you have show button icon. So basically saying, do you want to show the button icon? You can put yes, or you can put no. It's really up to you. And it just gives it a little icon here that you guys can select. I'm gonna put no, just because I feel like that's, you know, I just don't want it. You know, we don't need it. And uh, that's pretty much it for the button. All right, so congrats, you guys just made a landing page. No, I'm just kidding, we're not done yet. We gotta add in a background, which is probably one of the most important aspects of web design. Now, I also wanna educate you guys a little bit on why we added everything to the left side. You guys notice you guys go to a lot of these websites here. Um, you guys probably go to a, a lot of websites on the internet and you always notice the button is on either the middle or on the left side. Listen. Studies also show that the button on the left side creates more engagement because right here we see this picture of this cat, right? And the cat's so cute and it's captured my attention. Now I want to take action. So I'm going to click on the button. But if you have the button on the right side, you know, people for some weird reason in the human brain, uh, they have to look left at the actual image, which to them is a little bit more work, right? So uh, here we can see the picture of the cat. It's very cute, I like it, therefore I wanna make an appointment. So we're gonna do the same exact thing uh, for our website. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is add a background color here. So right here, we're gonna click on this gear icon. You see how this blue section is controlling this entire section? The blue box will control the entire background. So if we add a color or an image, it will apply to the entire background. So right here, I'm gonna click on section settings and click on backgrounds. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and enter a background color. Now you guys can select from various different colors, right? There are a lot of colors that we can go with right here. I think the white is actually pretty cool. I actually do like that. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the color code that I use for the other uh, website. So now I'll go ahead and click on this little color code and I'm gonna paste in my color code. So the color code is D6E3FF. And then I'll click on the check mark. And that gives it this, uh, this really nice blue subtle background. I do like that a lot, you know, it looks really nice. But before we go ahead and we go on to the next section, let's explore these other background options. So here we have a background gradient. A background gradient essentially allows you to add a gradient to your actual entire background. Gradients are very popular. Uh, a lot of people use gradients. And what you guys can do here is actually click on the actual blue and you can adjust the color here. So let's say for example, we want like a, I don't know, like a, a blue, right? Or a purple. And I'll click on this one over here. And this one I want like a, a black or something, or I, I don't know, like a white, you know, something like that. And there's other options here where you guys can change the actual gradient type. You can make it circular, which means it starts in a circle. And uh, you guys can do like, uh, these are actually our two new options, elliptical and conical, right? It's pretty cool. And then you can also adjust the gradient direction. So you can make it really customizable. I mean, Divi's pretty incredible. I mean, these options are, are not available for any other builder. So you guys can uh, adjust these and mess around with these as you want. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much what a gradient is and how to apply them to your website. You guys can also go to this website here, uigradients.com. They actually have a lot of really nice color grading codes that you guys can use. For example, let's say you guys wanna add in something like uh, this one here. You would just copy this code, right? Go back over here, go to the first gradient and then paste that code in there. And then click on check. And then go to the second one, copy that one go back over here and then click on the other one. And then you'd paste in that color code like that and click on check. So um, you can really achieve some really nice effects with this. Maybe here you can add in like an image, change this text to like a white or something and make it look really nice. All right, but uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna say goodbye to gradients. All right, goodbye gradients. Uh, next we have a background image, which we'll do in just a bit. Also background video. If you guys do wanna have a background video to your website, you'll click on add a background video. And then you guys can actually upload a video or you guys can click on insert from URL. 
Here you can go ahead and insert a YouTube URL or a Vimeo URL uh, right here. But I'll go ahead and select choose a background video file. And I went ahead and I went to a website called videovo.net and I went ahead and I downloaded some video backgrounds. Uh, this website offers a lot of free video backgrounds you guys can use. And I find that if you guys upload it to your server, it works a lot more. In fact, it's a lot more stable than uh, inserting it from some random URL because it gets lost and it doesn't work half the time. So right here is my video. I'll click on open. And now I'm uploading this MP4 file. And now you guys can see that we have this really beautiful video background on our website. So this is one uh, another way you guys can add in like a really nice background to your site. Uh, check out videovo.net. There's a lot of other free websites. Just do a quick Google search. But uh, this one has over 500,000. So I'm sure you guys will find something that works just for you. So uh, yeah, that's that. I'm going to close that. Next, we have background patter. Now, this is a new option that Divi just released. And what this does is this allows you to add uh, patterns to your actual background. And you guys can adjust. There's like a lot of different uh, styles here. Uh, this actually will work pretty well. I do like this a lot. You know, actually, ugh, it's blocking the letters. We can't see it. Yeah, there's a lot of different, a lot of different things you guys can pick from here. Yeah, you guys can use this. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons for it. All right, this is a, a new feature they've added, and they're gonna add a lot more. So if you want to add a background pattern, this is how you can accomplish it. Now there is one more that's really cool, and this is a new feature as well. This is called the background mask. This will actually add some sort of design to your actual website. And I do like this a lot because this looks like an image basically, but it's really not. And you can actually customize this. You know, you can change the colors to make it look however you want it to look, but I'm just going to leave it as transparent. And there's other different options here. So instead of like a layer blob, you can add like this little thing, you know, something like that, right? Or we can actually transform it. Uh, there's a lot of different options here, which you guys can use to kind of mess around with and stuff like that. But I really do like this option. This is a new option that they have just recently released. So you guys can just go through these options and see uh, which masks work best for you. And they have tons of them to pick from. Uh, they do also have tutorials on use cases on how they made some really nice, beautiful layouts uh, with this. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description. But um, as of right now, I'm not going to use these, but they are really cool and I do like them. All right, so that's pretty much the background summed up, right? Now, there is one other thing that I want to do, and that is a background image. So right here, we have add a background image. Now, I have demo images for all of you guys in the description below of this video. They are called the practice images, and you guys can use these images to follow along in this tutorial. So I'll go ahead and uh, first, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you guys the folder. It's called the practice images. You're just going to double click on here. You're going to open them. And then you're going to see this file called practice images. You're going to see that there's these images here. And then there's also images for the entire websites. And these are all the images that we use on the websites. You guys can use them completely free just to practice. But uh, the practice images, these ones we're going to use a little bit more in the video just to teach you guys some strategies with landing pages. So let's go back to our website here. And now I'm going to click on select files. Over here to the desktop, I'm now going to open up the practice images and then I'm going to upload some of these uh, images right here. All right, cool. So I went ahead and I uploaded some images. I want to teach you guys some strategies really quick. Here we have this image of this gentleman right here, right? Here I'll click on upload an image. You'll then see that this image overrides the actual background color. Now, whenever you guys are adding images, you want them to correlate to your actual text, right? So here we have this strong message, right, with the call to action. And then we have this gentleman over here looking uh, like, you know, fierce and strong, and it invites you to click on the button. You'll see that also in a lot of our landing pages that we always have the image uh, purposely added to the right side so that the text is legible. You want to make sure that your text is readable. And for all of our images, that's pretty much what we do here. So you can see here as well, we added in text on the left side that makes it very easy to read. And also here, we want to convey the message that we're friendly and we have the girl on the right side. So you want to make sure that you do the same thing uh, for your websites. But I'm going to go ahead and change this really quick. I'm going to go to add a background image. And also the same thing for this little cat right here. So the same thing, guys, you know, we would just go ahead and change this text to white, just like the other page. And there's other images here you guys can mess around with. Like, for example, there's this gentleman here. But these kind of backgrounds are only good when you actually have the text in the middle of the page and it's more legible. So we'd probably want to change this to white 
maybe even make it a little bit more legible. But uh, we actually use this same layout in another template that we use. You know, we do use all of these images, you know, that you guys see here. But I'm going to go ahead and click on add a background image. And I'm going to go ahead and upload the other file that we use for the actual websites. So images for websites. And I'm going to go ahead and upload all these images right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of them. And then I'll click on open. It might take like a few minutes here to upload all the images. So just give it like uh, three or four minutes. All right, cool. So I went ahead and I uploaded all these images and I'm going to select this image right here that looks like a little credit card or uh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> you know, it's a concept and I'm going to click on upload an image. Now you guys have noticed right away that this image is just way too big. It blocks the whole page, but there are some options here that we can use that'll actually make this a little bit more smaller. So here for the background image size, we're going to change this to something like, you know, fits or actual size or stretch to fill or even a custom size, which you guys can also adjust the size of this, which is really cool. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change this to fit. And then we can also change the position of this. So the background image position, I'm going to change this to the center right. I'm going to put it over there. I like this option better because uh, when you add the image to the background, it's a little bit more responsive by default. So it looks better on all devices. However, if I were to create like an image module here, and add in the image, it doesn't look as responsive in my personal opinion. So I would go ahead and add in uh, an image like this if you want to add it to your background because it just looks a lot nicer and you guys can actually adjust the actual uh, position of the actual image. So I'll go ahead and click on check. And look at that guys, we now have a perfect landing page that we created in just a few minutes. It looks very similar to ours. In fact, uh, just a small little position of the image uh, this is a little bit larger and bolded, but ultimately it is pretty much the same exact thing. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to actually make this box a little bit larger, right? It's too small and I want it to stretch over here a little bit. So to stretch a box, we'll click on the gear icon. We'll go to design the spacing. I'm sorry, the sizing, <laughs> and then we'll actually increase the max width. So the max width, I want it to extend about 1250 pixels or 1248, that's fine. And click on check. And then maybe we should increase this size because you know, it's just a little too small now, now that we've actually made the page a little bit bigger and we can make this a lot bigger like that. And then we can also, you know, add some emphasis to it and maybe even all caps. No, that's fine. <laughs> I think that's fine. And then we'll click on check. So that's how we created a really nice landing page. All right, next, I wanna make sure this background is responsive on all devices, right? Now, I'm gonna introduce you guys to custom CSS. Hey, CSS is normally used by developers, but don't worry, this code is really simple. You'll just have to copy and paste some code. So over here under section settings, I wanna to go to advanced, and then we're gonna click on custom CSS. And for the main elements, I want you guys to paste this code. I will leave this code in the description of this video that you guys can use on your websites. But what this does here is that it actually forces the image to be responsive and it adjusts it perfectly so it's in the middle. So you notice here how if we take out the CSS, the image is a little bit too large and it's also not uh, even. So if I add in the CSS right here, it'll actually force the image to be in the middle and it forces it. That's how you guys can use CSS to sort of add a little bit more feel and look to your website. Now there's another option that I want to introduce you guys to, and that is motion effects. So let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this little plus icon here, and we're going to find an image here. All right. And for this image, we're going to click on this little image here and we're going to find that cute little cloud. There's a cloud here somewhere. There it is. All right. We got a, We got the cute little cloud here. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got the cloud. This cloud, uh, it's too big, right? So let's go to the design here and make it smaller. Sizing, we're going to make this smaller. All right. We're going to make this smaller. All right. 20, let's do 25 guys, right? 25. And I'm going to push this over like to the right side, right? Just somewhere random, but it still looks good there, right? That still looks nice. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you guys motion effects. And this is a really cool trick. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the advanced tab here. Now we're going to scroll down till we see scroll effects. And this is really cool. So we're going to click on horizontal motion. I want to make sure that there is some horizontal motion to this bad boy, right? So we're going to enable horizontal motion. 
Now with, with this setting here, you'll see that if we scroll down, the, the cloud actually scrolls with us, which is pretty cool. In fact, you can use this for all of your elements, but I feel like the cloud here really just adds some, you know, some really neat design to your site. Um, over here, you have some few options. You can actually control where you want it to be at and how far it's going to go. So if I scroll down here, it'll then keep scrolling over there. And if I take this to the other side, uh, it will scroll like that. So uh, yeah, the horizontal motion settings, they will take some time to get used to. But uh, if you just keep messing around with these settings, you guys can understand how all this works. I'll be very honest, guys, I am not a super pro on these settings, but I have used them on my demo website here with this cloud. So I just wanted to introduce you guys uh, to that option. And there's other options here, like middle, bottom of the elements. Uh, there's a lot of different ways on how to use this, but I think this is really cool. And I, and I, you know, I like it. So I want to show you guys that. So uh, yeah, make sure to like this video. <laughs> All right. All right. So congratulations. We have now made our homepage. If you guys have any questions about homepage or landing page strategies, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's keep going. Hey guys, a little design tip, you know, when you guys are designing your website, uh, try to stick to like a specific color scheme. You know, I do have a video on other topics like web design and stuff, but just a quick summary, uh, just try to stick to like three to four colors. You guys can tell on my demo websites that we only use like three to four colors. I see a lot of beginners try to add too many colors. And what that does is that that loses your brand. It loses your identity. So try to stick to around three colors, max four colors on your website and carry that uh, throughout your entire website. Also, don't use more than two fonts. Okay, stick to one to two fonts. Anything more than two fonts, your website will, uh, it'll start to lose its identity. You know, people are kind of like, what website is this? Like, it, it gets too wild, you know? So uh, yeah, but with that said, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. All right, cool. So now that you guys have a good understanding of how to design and add elements, let's go ahead and move on to the next section here. So right here, we'll click on the plus icon for the blue setting. And now we have three options, right? We have regular, specialty, and full width. Uh, we already did regular. So I just want to, I just want to introduce you guys to these other two before we go on any further. Specialty is just adding like a special type of column here, where here you can see that uh, these are a little bit longer. They have this section and then two little dots. So they're just different ways on how to present columns, right? And there are a lot of uses for this. It just depends on what you're going for. You know, you can insert an image module here, a text, a call to action, call to action, right? So it really depends on what you're trying to go for. There's also the uh, full width section here. The full width section allows you to add in full width elements. These elements extend all the way to the ends of the page. And some of them even extend on the entire page itself. For example, here, I'll just grab in the uh, full width header, which is a very popular one. And under the design tab, I'll go to layout and I'll make this full screen. So you can actually go ahead and use this as well if you want to have a full screen uh, style. The only thing is this element is a little limited. The big problem here is that you cannot add in modules on top of this text module. So this is a preset style, right? This module cannot be adjusted. That's why I prefer to do it like this here. So you can kind of add what you want and you can do, you know, whatever you want. But from right here, all you can do here is change the title. You can change the fonts and the colors. You can add a background image and you can also align this um, image here. I'm sorry, this text to the middle or T to the right side. And that's pretty much it. So for example, for the layout, you can just do this and that's pretty much it. You really can't do much than that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to explore the full width modules, they are very responsive, but just know that they are a little bit more limited compared to actually doing it yourself with the regular modules. All right. So that's a quick little rundown of the, uh, full width and also the specialty here. Let's click on regular and now let's click on the three column row here. Let's go ahead and introduce you guys to a lot of these other elements here. Here we have call to action, right? A call to action is essentially inviting a user to do something. Really quickly under the link here, I'm going to put this little button that makes the button appear. This is essentially like saying, uh, I want you to take an action. I want you to do something. And uh, yeah, that's a call to action. There is also a, uh, we got like a blurb. Blurbs are also really popular as well. Blurb is essentially the same thing as a call to action. It just doesn't have a button. So that's pretty much pretty much the same thing here. So if I put in the URL here, uh, these are just for the actual titles. And then over here, we can add in like an image or something like that, you know, an image 
where we can change the image to uh, something like this guy. And there you go. So you guys can use these modules and then you can also drag and drop these modules here, right? So we can go like that. We can also duplicate modules. So he, over here, I can duplicate this and I can duplicate that as well. Now I can actually right click over here and I can actually undo, redo, or I can just go ahead and just delete it with that trash can right there. So I'm going to go ahead and trash this, trash this. I'll trash this as well. And then I'll go ahead and drag in this element over here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how the elements work here. Uh, you can pretty much just add the modules. Um, then you can just drag and drop them. You can go through each of these modules and explore what all of them do. We're going to go through some of them in this video, but we're not going to go through all of them just because there are a lot of elements to cover, but I will cover as much as I can. All right, so now I want to teach you guys how to manage the blurbs. Blurbs are pretty popular. Right here, you can see that this is a blurb, right? It has this icon with some text. And um, yeah, blurbs are actually a really popular uh, element. So right here, let's go ahead and design this really quick. We're going to go ahead and change this title right here to something like digital marketing. And for the body paragraph, you guys can obviously put something that you know relates to your website. But I'll just go ahead and put in like official marketing partner. Now here we have this image and icon. What is unique about the blurb is you can actually use an icon instead of an actual image. So you can use an image, but if you don't have an image, you can use their library of like uh, icons and they have tons and tons of them to go through. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put in something and then we can customize and design this. Now, to be honest, if you go on the design tab, it's hard to find out where to actually go to design stuff. So for every module, there's this little pencil icon. This will automatically take you to the settings that are um, there that you guys would you know, design everything with. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to like a black, right? But I want a soft black, you know, that, that really hard black, it's really, it's really tough, you know, it's really strong and stuff like that. Uh, we can choose to have a background color. If you guys wanna have a background color, over here, you guys can see I added a black background color and I use just a white color. So I actually inverted that. So I'll take this to white and then black, right? And then, you know, I, uh, I reduced the transparency here just a little bit like that. Okay, I'll click on the check. And then you can place the image to like the top or the left. I like this actually better and I use this on a lot of my other websites, but uh, for this actual website, we just put it on the top. And then here we can control the actual size of it. So I'll just make it a little bit smaller. And then I will align this to the left side, right? That looks nice. Now you can also have the rounded corners, which I think a lot of you do want to have. So you can see here how uh, the corners are a lot more rounded. So that does look a lot nicer like that. Uh, we also might need to reduce the actual, the icon width here. All right, and then we'll scroll down over here. And now we, we might need to add a, a little bit more of a border, right? Because uh, you can see here how, there we go. We just add just a little bit more space just so it's not so small, right? And we'll scroll down here. We'll talk about padding and margin a little bit later. Uh, but these other options, these are uh, options where you can design the actual blurb, but I'll give you guys a better example of when to use these options. I would not use them for the actual blurb. And that's pretty much it. Now here we have the text. So we can adjust the alignments of the actual text here, but I'm gonna leave it to the left side. And then we can adjust the actual font here as well. So I'm gonna change mine to Jost, right? Jost. I think that's fine like that. Change this to like a, a black, right? And we can make this bigger or smaller, right? So we can make this bigger or smaller, probably do like 25, right? Something like that. Here I'll make this just around 20, right? And now what I'm going to do is go to the body text and I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, right? Just right. Black and I'll make this 25. All right. Now I want to add some line height here. I think they're too close to each other, right? So we're going to add some line height just like that. Basically, I'm just saying I, I want them a little bit farther away from each other. And I think that's good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click on the check. Now below that, I want to add in another little text module, right? So we're just going to throw in a little text module below that. And we're just going to use this as demo text just to fill in some space here, right? So I think that looks good. 
Now, we're gonna also add in a button. However, we have already created a button right here, right? And I think that we don't need to really make another button from scratch. So we have a few options here. We can actually duplicate this module, and then we can take this module, and then we can drag it down here like that. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted the corners of this button really quick, just so they're not too circular. Now, let's say, for example, you want to save this, right? So this little thing right here, we're gonna click on save module to library, and this will be like the button for our website. And we're just going to uh, save this to the library. That's basically saying that I want to use this for later. In fact, you can do this for all of your modules. So if you want to uh, grab this text, you can say this is like the primary text, right? And I will save this to the actual uh, menu as well. Now over here, we can do something else. So over here, I might want to add in like an image, right? And this is a very popular format. So we're gonna add in an image right here, right? And then we can go ahead and we can go ahead and duplicate this text. And then we'll take this text, we'll put it right below the image. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this button here as well. And then we will also drop it right below that text. This is a very popular format. Uh, a lot of people use this format for showcasing uh, employees, right? So you can go ahead and put in like an image here of your employee, right? Like this is this is John. And then you can talk about John here, you know, and then this right here would be like John's name, right? So I'll just drag it right there. And then this would be like his profile or like his social media or, or whatever you want to do and stuff like that. So uh, this is another use case option of how you guys can add this uh, to your sites. But I don't want to do that here. So what I'm going to do here is I want to duplicate this section and I want to have it in three columns, but I don't want to have to do the work all over again. So what I'm going to do here is go over to this gear icon and here we have column one, right? Here's column two and column three. I'm going to delete these. And then I'm going to duplicate these just like that. So now we have these three options, which I, which I do like, I think this looks a lot nicer. Now let's say, for example, you want to add a background color to the first uh, icon here or the first row, you'll click on the gear icon and then you'll go to backgrounds. And then from here you can add a background color. So let's say you want to like want to add in red, right? But I want to reduce the subtleness of that, right? Something like that. I think that looks a lot nicer, right? Now you guys might also notice here how this color is just way too close to the button. You know, it almost looks like it's squished, right? So now we want to add padding, right? So over here under the design tab, we're going to go to spacing. Padding is essentially space. So what I'm saying here is I want to add space to the top. I want to add space to the bottom space to the left side and then space to the right side just so that we have some breathing room here right just so everything is not so uh you know so cramped and so tight you know it's, it's like uh you know it's it's we got some room here and over here for the border we can add in like this rounded effect so it's not so pointy so that looks a lot nicer right now instead of actually doing this all over again we can actually copy these styles and we can address it to these next two modules. So for example, here, I'm going to click on this little gear icon and under the first one right here, I'm going to right click and we can go to copy autumn styles. And on the second one, I can paste the item styles. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking all of the settings from the first one and I'm putting it to the second one. Now I'm going to undo this really quickly. So over here, I'm going to click on this little uh, box right here and I'm going to click on this little, um, I guess you want to say clock, and we're going to undo that really quick. Now, instead of doing that, there's another option. There's something called extend styles as well, which is a really cool feature. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the gear icon, right click. And here we have extend item styles. What this means is I want to extend the style of this to the page, to this section, or to the entire row. So I'm going to select the row and click on extend. And now you guys can see it has now extended that style to all the elements in that row. So it will really speed up our workflow, right? And then of course you guys can go ahead and add in like a background color here. So for the second column, we can add in like a color here of like green and then reduce the transparency here because it's too much, right? And then do the same thing for the actual first one as well. I'm sorry, the last one. 
you guys can tell I'm not on a script, right? <laughs> so I just I, I just know the builder and I, I just know this stuff. So I, I'm not on a script here. And there you go. So now we have this beautiful section that looks really professional. And uh, yeah, I think you guys will really like this. Now, let's say, for example, you guys just want to add something here on the top right here. I'll go ahead and add in a new row. And we're going to add in like uh, like about us, right? So let's say I want to take this and I want to put it above this section. We're going to move this row. I'm going to hold this. And then we're going to drag and drop there. Now, I'm kind of lazy here. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I can either uh, extend the styles from this one or we can use those elements that we saved. So let's do that. I'm going to trash this module now. Click on the plus, add from library, and we're going to use the primary text one right here. All right. We're going to use this module and there you go. And now we'll just go ahead and center this text really quick just so it's in the middle, right? Makes sense. And this can be like, you know, about our company or something like that. You know, who, who knows, you know, like about our company, right? So about, about our company. So this does look great, right? Now let's say for example, you just want to add in just a little bit more stuff on the background, just so it's not so white. Here, I'll click on the gear icon. If it does disappear on you, just double click here and that, that'll bring up the, the actual background settings. For the design here under the, I'm sorry, for the background, we'll just add in like a background mask or something. This would be a better situation on where we can add background masks and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and add in a very, a very faint color here, you know, like a very small one here, right? Just like a very faint color like that. And there you go. Now we have this sort of masking style effect. All right. So that's how you guys can use the background masks, add in elements and just have a really nice looking little section right here. Uh, we're going to make this section a little later. Uh, it is a little advanced. That's why I just wanted to put it on hold just because it was a little too much for you guys. And I felt like doing this first would have made a lot more sense. All right, now before we go ahead and talk about this section right here, which we're gonna create, I quickly wanna show you guys how to create a grid style effect like hey, this. Listen. A lot of users ask me how to achieve this and I'll just go ahead and walk you guys through this. It's a really nice uh, format to add on your sites. Let's go ahead and just quickly walk you guys through that. Over here, we have this plus section, we have regular. Now, depending on how many images you want, you can just select how many images you want. Uh, for my specific example, I'll just use four. I mean, I can use more, but uh, you know, I'm just gonna use one for now. And I'll just put in an image here. I'll click on the check. I will then duplicate these because I'm super lazy, right? And I want to just drag and drop these. Oh, it went over there, huh? That's weird. Here, uh, there it goes. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. And then uh, this one there. Okay, so now that we uh, added these images in, I now want to control this row right here. So I want to delete this space. So under the gear icon, we'll go to design for sizing. We're going to turn on the gutter width. Gutter width means the space in between the actual elements. I'm going to change that to one. All right. So now there's no more space. You guys see that? No space at all. And over here we have the width. I'm going to make it hundred percent. And here you have the max width. Now what the max myth means is this is a, basically applying to the screen size of the actual visitor. So right now I'm going to just apply it to like 1800. This means if the user is on a monitor up to 1800 pixels, it will stay full width. But if they are on like a four or eight K monitor, then you might have to add in more pixels uh, for that specific user. Right. But uh, I would just leave it at something that matches the rest of your website like, I don't know, like 2K or something like that, and just, you know, leave it at there. And then I'll click on check. Now you guys might notice here how we have this white space right here, and we also have white space right here. You guys can manually just drag this like that, but I would rather go ahead and type it in just to make sure that it's 100% uh, zero, right? So for the row setting here, design, spacing, we're gonna change the padding to zero on all sides. What that means is I don't want any space whatsoever in this column. Now for this blue column, we also need to get rid of this space on all of the sides. So the gear icon, design, uh, spacing, zero, 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 zero as well. And there you go. So now we have this beautiful grid 
which we can put on you know, any images and make it look really nice. So that's how you guys would achieve a grid style effect for your website. Now uh, let's go ahead and keep going here with this tutorial. So now we're gonna go ahead and create this section, but we do have a lot of elements that we already have that we don't need to make all over again. But this is a two column row right here, right? One column and two columns. So let's do that. Here we go. We're gonna plus over here, regular, a two column row. And uh, we can add it an image here. So image, right? So this will just be like a placeholder for now. So now we'll go ahead and add in these modules on the right side. But you guys remember, we've already created these modules. So let's go ahead and I think we have to say these again, right? So this is the text. And this would be like the red text, right? Red text. And then we also have this button, which I do like. We're going to save this button here. Main button. Save to library. Now we can always duplicate those modules or we can just reuse them again, you know? So add from library and we have the red text. We're going to use this module, right? And then we're going to do the same thing over here. You know, it's, it's all about working smarter, guys. You know, work, work smarter, not harder, right? Is that is that what they say, you know? And then over here, we're just going to add in, I think we just threw in some, uh, some other text here. And then we're going to add in the button. Add from library and main button and use this module. This is a lot faster than doing it, you know, all from scratch. I mean, it would take way too long, right? So next we need to add in the toggle module. So right here, click on plus, and we're gonna type in toggle. Toggle means that if they click on this, it will then open up a little bit more information like that, which is really cool. So this will be like digital marketing, right? Digital marketing. And then we have some other information and this would be the information that would, uh, you know, that if they were to click on it, it would present this info right here. So that's where that's referring to here for the design tab. We're going to go ahead and design this really quick. We're going to make this like a, a very, you know, very, I actually like that color. It's very soft, very subtle, right? Um, you guys can choose the icon here. It will reflect the close icon. That means if they click on it, this is the close icon and the other one is open. Right, so we have close and we have open, which this is the open one here. I'll just select something like this, right? And uh, we can always adjust, you know, everything in here, like the toggle, the background color. So that means if they open it, we can actually adjust that background color. Now that is if they actually open it. If they don't, it's gonna stay this color or it'll stay this color. And we can adjust the background color here, all right? But I just want to go ahead and make sure that we adjust the actual, um, you know, the text and stuff like that. So for the title text, I want to make sure that this is our current font, which is Joe Strader Jost. There you go, title font here. All right, and once you guys open it, you'll then see you can enter a title. So put in like digital marketing. And then you can go ahead and put in some information once the user actually clicks on it right there. And there's other options here, uh, like for the states, like do you want to make this open or closed? You can actually leave it like this if you want to do that, or you can leave it closed. But I want to adjust the background here. So for the actual background, I want to add in a very uh, transparent uh, style right there, right? So I just want it so uh, it's not showing too much background. And for the design, I just want to change the actual font here. And I also want to get rid of that border. So for the actual text color, we'll leave it like that. But I want to adjust this to just right just there we go and i will make this a uh where is it bold all right now the one thing i want to do here is i want to get rid of that border so for the border we're going to go ahead and make sure there is no border width right here so i'm just going to get rid of that border width and that's it so now if they click on this it'll just present the information in a really beautiful format and you guys know me by now i'm super lazy so we're just going to duplicate this and there you go all right, and then we're all set. Now you guys might also notice here how there's space. You guys can just get rid of the space, right? Get rid of the space, right? Beautiful, Woo, man, I'm good. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add in a um, an image here on the actual left side. But uh, also there's one other module that I wanna introduce you guys to, and that is the divider module. Just to give it some design, right? I love dividers. So over here, divider. Uh, we can show the divider, but I want to make this a very faint color here. 
And we're gonna make sure that the visibility shows the divider. And for the design, I wanna change the line here. You know, we're gonna make it a very, a very subtle black, right? Just a very faint black here, right? And we can adjust the line style, like you can make it like dotted or dashed or, you know, whatever, and it changes like that. So you guys can see that. But uh, what I wanna do is I wanna change the sizing here. So I'm gonna put this in the middle and then we're gonna reduce the width. Notice here how you see that the line is actually disappearing. Makes sense, right? And uh, yeah, once that's done, I'll click on check. Now dividers are not necessarily for creating division or creating space, yet they're also used for decor and design purposes. For example, uh, this website. You can see how we added in these dividers right here just to break up all this text so it's not so distracting on the eye, right? So we just want to make it look a little bit more nicer by putting in text, divider, text, you know, stuff like that. So uh, dividers are really helpful for actually creating design uh, and not just about creating space. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this button here. I don't know why I put it there, <laughs> you know? And I'll take this divider and drag it there. That looks like that, right? That looks a lot nicer. Now over here, we can just simply add in an image, right? So image, and I'll just throw in, I don't know, this this one here. Now I wanna talk to you guys quickly about the image filters. I did talk about them briefly up here, but I felt like that was a bad example. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about their filters right now. So under this gear icon, we have the design tab. If you scroll down, we have filters, transforms, and animations. Animations just gives it some sort of animation, right? So if a user scrolls down, it will then animate, right? And there's a lot of uh, controls and functions on the seconds and the direction and all sorts of really cool stuff. There is also the filters. Filters are essentially just adding in like more effects and stuff like that. Essentially, it's like a built-in Photoshop where you can adjust the contrast, the brightness. Um, you know, there's a lot you can do with this. It's really amazing to be honest. And uh, Elegant Themes actually does give a lot of use cases where you guys can uh, add in some really nice effects and really cool styles. Uh, they have like this one blur. And then like when you scroll down, it blurs out. It's really cool. Like you guys gotta check it out. This is the actual uh, filter effects. It's just ways on how you can add in a little bit more to your sites. Also, the transform. Now the transform options allows you to transform the actual image. Now just be very careful about this because it can have a lot of responsive issues, right? But let me just give you an example. Let's say I want this image a little bit larger, right? But it just, it doesn't really fit outside of the box. So I can actually just say, you know what? I wanna make it just a little bit larger, you know, a little bit bigger, right? Using this uh, control. And then for the transform uh, translate, there's other ways on how you can move it around here like just to give it that really nice position. And then you can also rotate it where just, you know, you get really, it gets really wacky. <laughs> you know, it's like, it gets really crazy here. All right. Yeah, there's that. There's the skew, which you can skew it. And then there's the transform origin, which you can put it in a specific state like that. So those are the actual image filters and also a lot of these other design options. Just be very careful and cautious uh, because remember you can have responsive issues later down the road if you add too much of it, okay? Now I know when I scroll over it looks smaller, but when I save the changes, it'll apply to the actual size. So don't worry about that too much, all right? So that's pretty much it. We made this section. Uh, compared to this section, we just made everything smaller. That's really all it is, it's just smaller. So it's pretty much the same structure, it's just a little smaller as you guys can tell. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the very next section, which is this section here. It's also very similar. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit right here by actually just duplicating this entire section. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this whole blue section. And this will actually make it so the entire section is duplicated. And all I did here was I just rearranged the elements. You know, I just, you know, just made it look different, but it's really not. So over here, I'll put that right there, all right? And then we'll go ahead and center align this, right? So the design, text, and we're going to center this this time, right? Now, one quick thing, guys, I'm gonna take this out. All right, the, the filters are cool and everything, but uh, you know, geez, I'm not gonna look at that the entire time, okay? So I'm just going to reset everything here. You know, reset all this, just because it is a lot to look at. And this is, let's be honest, this is really ugly. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, who wants to look at that? All right, so here I will duplicate this as well. And we'll also drag this over here. And uh, I'm gonna double click on this. This is other another shortcuts. It works sometimes, right? And I will center this, all right? And then we're gonna get rid of this. You guys are fired, all right? I think that's pretty much it here. So you can see I just pretty much made everything smaller, all right? So I just went ahead and I deleted this and I made this image smaller. In fact, I'll just go ahead and delete this and we'll just upload another one because the, the new one is gonna be a little bit smaller here, a little bit more compact, you know, I like that. And we'll just put in, uh, we'll put in this one. All right, that's a little, yeah, much, much neater, much, much, it's cute, <laughs> you know, it's cute. And here we have text, we have the bar counters and then text. So what I'm gonna do here is say, all right guys, we're gonna, you guys gotta go, you know, you're retired. Duplicate, I'm sorry, we'll duplicate this section. We'll drag it up here. And we're now gonna add in some bar counters. Bar counters are another new module, right? This one right here. And we're, what we can do here is we can just go ahead and uh, you know make it like our demo. So this will be like marketing, right? So over here, I'm gonna click on the title. This will be marketing. And this is like 90%, right? And then over here under the design tab, this is where you guys can actually design stuff. So let's say I want it red, right? For the title, uh, you can move the title around here, but I'm gonna leave it to the left side. And I just want to change this text here. So it's gonna be just, right? Just. All right, and once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and check this. And I'm just gonna duplicate these really quick like that. Of course, I can adjust this if I choose to do that, but uh, I'm not gonna do that, but uh, you guys get the point. So you can adjust the actual percentage right here by putting on like 50 or something like that. Um, you guys can also turn on the number as well by going over here to elements and turning the percentage on. If it doesn't display, just go ahead and save the changes. And once you guys uh, exit the builder, then the actual number may display. So let's go ahead and click on exit visual builder and there's the number. Sometimes when you're working on the actual back end, uh, the changes might not appear, but they are there. All right, so you just gotta close the builder and they will display. All right, but we've created a really nice section in a matter of minutes, so congrats. And the only thing left here to do is we need to add in a background color. Now, instead of actually going to the actual color here, let's just see if we can get a little, little cocky here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up here and just copy the, copy the section styles. And then we're gonna paste that section styles right here. And there it is. So now we have this beautiful section. All we need to do now is get rid of that background image. So I'm gonna double click here, background, background image, and I'm going to delete that. And there you go. We have successfully made another section. Now the next section here is, it's interesting, right? We have a three column row right here. And I added a lot of padding here to this blurb to give it this effect that it's in the middle of this whole box. So it's really interesting. So let's go ahead and, and utilize this next section. Right here, we're gonna do a three column row, all right? Now the next section, I also used borders and we haven't really used borders yet. Uh, so that'll be like something new for us to learn. Add an image there, right? Right here, we will go ahead and put in a blurb module, which you guys are probably familiar with right? And then we'll add in another image here. All right, another image of this, uh, we have another girl here, right? We'll just put in this girl here. Yeah, All right. I think that was the right format, right? Yeah, it's the right format. All right, so the first thing that I want to do here is I want to adjust this one, right? Um, I just want to add an icon here. And I just want to get rid of all the text. So I don't really want to have any body paragraph, right? So you don't have to use the text if you don't want to, right? This will just be like, watch video now, right? And I'll quickly go ahead and just design the text here just to keep it consistent, right? So it was uh, Jost, right? Jost, and it was also red, right? Now, one thing that we need to do here is we need to add in this icon. So we're gonna add in an icon and we're gonna make it red here. Uh, for the image and icon, we gotta turn that on, right? And we're gonna add in like a play button or something or whatever you want. Ooh, that's hideous. Uh, image and icon, we're gonna turn that uh, turn that white, right? Or I'm sorry, red, right? And there you go, all right? So that looks good. 
All right, we might want to make the background color transparent just in case you added a background. And I think we should reduce the size of this. You can see this is a lot smaller and also it's center aligned. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this just a lot smaller here, like just 40. And then for this text, we are now going to um, make this center align like that. All right. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to spread out this column, right? So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. All right. Design, sizing. We are going to go ahead and increase the max width here. Well, first we'll do like 90%. And then we're going to increase the max size here. All right. Now, uh, also what we're going to do is that we're going to make these images larger, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it like this. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating margin, right? So margin is basically saying I want the image to start at a specific area. Uh, over here, we have module settings, design. Uh, we have the spacing. And now you see that we have margin. So what we're saying is I want this image to actually start 100 pixels from the right side. Uh, let me give you guys another example here. Uh, for this image, I'm sorry, for this module, we're going to go to design, right? And then we're going to go down to uh, spacing. Now, what I can do here is I have two options. I can either add 150 pixels of space to the top to put it in the center, or we can add in margin. What margin does is margin is not space, okay? Margin is essentially saying, I want this module to start at a specific location. So I want the module to start at 150 pixels below that. So padding and margin are very confused between both uh, from users is because it looks like it's the same thing, but it's really not. So just to give you another example of margin, I'll take this image, right? And for the design under spacing, I'm now going to add margin, except I'm going to add negative margin. And what that's going to do is that that's going to say, I want the image to start 100 pixels from where it was originally placed. And I can even put 150 pixels, or I can even do 250 pixels. And essentially what it's doing here, it's taking the image from its original spot and it's forcing it up, right? So that's an example of what margin is, right? It is basically placing the elements in a specific location. Padding is space, right? That's just saying I only want space above the actual element, right? But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Now I'm gonna add in more of the, uh, I'm sorry, the negative padding to this size, right? So we're gonna, I'm sorry, negative margin to this side. So I'm gonna put something like maybe a hundred. And you notice here how this actually gets larger. So it actually kind of works out for us when we actually uh, make it larger because it has to extend onto the whole row right there. So we're gonna do something like minus 150 pixels, right? And this one right here, we'll also do, we can do like 150 as well or something like that, right? All right, so that's pretty much what that means. Now, you can see here how we added space, but if you go over here, that is not space, right? So that's the big difference between padding and margin. So that's how we made this section. Now, I clicking want to go ahead and add in a border here. So for this specific row, you can see the teal section. I want to add in a, like a drop shadow, just like a box shadow here. You can see here how there's this now box shadow around this whole element, right? It makes it more, uh, there's more emphasis on this, right? And you can actually change the actual color here. So you can see here how we added this blue. Just like over here as well, you can see we added this blue, right? So we added in this blue element that just gives it a little bit more focus and a little bit more emphasis. And you guys can add box shadows on everything. I mean, I can add a box shadow on this element, you know? So for example, the design, the box shadow, I can also make this a little, you know, box shadow as well. Just be very cautious because this is a very quick way to make your sites really tacky and you could probably lose identity of your website. So just be mindful about the box shadows, add them sparingly. I know they look really nice, but don't add them too much. All right, so now that we've completed this section, now let's go ahead and make this section here. Now you guys don't have to follow me here. I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit just by uh, creating this for you guys. So over here, I just want you guys to visually see how I do things just so when you guys are building websites, you guys have some sort of, you know, some sort of ballpark on what to do here. So I'm gonna click on the first one the text, right? This is our title, right? Now below that, I'm actually gonna click on the teal one again, and we're gonna do a two column row here. And this is gonna be our 
image, text, and button, right? So we have image, right? And I'm gonna duplicate this, drag it down here. And then we already have a pre-made button, right? So add from library, I'm just going to insert the main button here and use this module, right? So this text up here, it is our projects, right? So it's our projects. In fact, you know what I can do actually is I can probably just um, use the other module that we have in our library, this one here, the primary text, and then just make it a little bit more smaller, right? So I'll go ahead and just, uh, what, what did I put here? Was it our projects, right? This would be like our projects our projects and then here we can just adjust this image to the current image uh, that we were using just something like this right and then i can just go ahead and say you know what i'm gonna just click on this row setting delete this and duplicate that column and we're pretty much done and if you guys want to get a little creative here uh you know what's why don't we actually add a divider here so we did add that divider which was this one here I can duplicate this one here and I'll drag it down here and I'll put it below there, you know, just to kind of give it some, give it some flavor, right? So the design sizing to the left, right? And we'll, we'll make it a little bit more dark just so users can actually see it. And, you know, we can, I think it's fine like that. I mean, we can leave it like that or we can make it smaller, right? So for the design sizing, we're going to change the width of it like that, right? And then we are going to just maybe just reduce the actual, uh, let's see the width here, right? Just to give it a little bit more, just to give it a little bit more, you know, yeah, there we go. That's good. Is that good guys? You guys can let me know here. <laughs> all right, you guys are, now you guys are the designer experts. All right, so we made that section. Ooh, we got a new section. All right, so how did we do this? This is so simple. Here we go. We're gonna do plus regular, and we're gonna add in a five column row right here. Now for the image, we're gonna select an image here. We'll go ahead and grab in this one there, right? Queely, I guess. And then we'll just go ahead and put these images like that, like this. Very simple, here we go, it's like a game. It's like a drag and drop. It's like a copy paste drag and drop, here we go. You know, it's like a big game, here we go. And we're gonna do it one more time here. And there you go. Now, instead of actually doing that all over again, uh, I can just duplicate this entire row and just add it like that. And then from here, uh, we can go ahead and say, you know what, I wanna, I wanna borrow you guys really quick. I wanna borrow this copy code here, copy section styles, and then we're gonna paste the section styles here. But it's also gonna bring us that image again. Oh no, the image is not there. Is it there? It's probably hidden somewhere, is it? No, it's not there. All right, cool. All right, then there you go. That's how we made uh, this section here. Obviously, all we're doing is we are adding in different images, as you can tell, but we do have padding here. You guys see that? So between each of these, uh, what we can do is we can add in padding or space. So for the actual design here, for the sizing, we can use gutter widths and we can extend the gutter widths. And then from the width, we can increase the width and we will just increase it just a little bit there like that. And I think that looks good. And we can just close this one and reduplicate it. And there you go. All right, awesome. Congratulations. We made that section in just a few seconds. Now, one tip I do want to give you guys when you're designing your websites, there's really no right or wrong way to use a module. Uh, for example, in a lot of my demo websites, we use call to actions and we don't even use the button module. So it just really depends on how you want to approach your website. You can use like text modules as buttons. Uh, it's really all about being creative with, you know, with Divi and the modules. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there, but let's go ahead and jump back to the tutorial. All right. So now for the next section, we're going to make this section here. Now this is actually a specialty section. This is one of the other uh, options. And we wanted to use this to sort of teach you guys how to actually use the actual specialty section. So we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and get started right here. We're gonna click on plus and we're gonna add in a new specialty section. Here we go. And the specialty section that we're gonna use is this one on the bottom right here. So I'll click on that. And for this one, we're going to enter something, right? So we're going to uh, put in our uh, red text first, right? All right, so now we need to add the text below that. Now, if this ever happens to you guys, just make the element somewhere else and then you guys can actually, um, you know, just drag and drop it if that ever happens. That does happen sometimes. Over here, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this below that. 
And this will be like uh, what our clients say about us or something like that. What's our clients say about us? And then we'll go ahead and reduce the size of this. So over here, a gear icon, design, heading text, and we'll make this just a little bit smaller, right? There we go. Now below that, we have this new section and I wanna add in a two column row. And I wanna add in a, uh, we can add in a testimonial or we can add in a person's module. Here we have testimonial, right? And uh, this will be like, you know, Daryl Wilson is my title. I am the CEO of DarylWilson.com. And the body paragraph, this would be the information about the individual. Now guys, this can be your staff. This can be uh, testimonials. This can be what our clients say. This can pretty much be anybody. All you would do is put like the name of the person. Uh, you would put their image and stuff like that, right? So you don't have to use these modules the way they're supposed to. As long as, as, long as it works, you can get as creative as you want. For the image, we're gonna select an image of this gentleman here. All right, this gentleman right here. All right, looking good, looking good. Now for the background, we're going to get rid of the background here. All right, no background, okay? Even over here, we have no background. Now you guys can add a background if you want, but that's really up to you. For the design, we're gonna go to the quote icon. I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick. Now, since this is a quote, you guys can leave this like that. However, if you guys do want to get rid of this, I can just make this transparent and also make this transparent as well. Now guys, there are a lot of options that, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of ways you guys can use to customize this and to make it look really, really cool. Uh, for example, like a box shadow. I know a lot of users like to add box shadows to these because it just really looks, it really looks vibrant. You know, it looks really nice, but uh, I'll leave it like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, you can see from our demo, we just didn't add anything in the back, but you don't have to. You guys can get as customizable as you want. Here, I'll duplicate this, and I will send it right there. Now, we also have an image, a text, and a button right here. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and put in an image. What should we add in here? This one here, and then we also have text. And then we have the button, which we are gonna use from our library. Ooh, I love how handy this is. You know, it's just, it's so easy. We can just keep grabbing it, you know? And look at that. I mean, it's a beautiful section. Now that looks great. So now you guys can see that we have this section where this image is here. We have our testimonials and this looks great. Now, before I go on any further, I did want to introduce you guys to one cool setting, and this is called the sticky options. This is actually a very popular setting that Divi has introduced, and that is to essentially make items stick to the website. Let me give you guys an example. What happens if I take this whole column right here, and I want to make it stick as the user scrolls down? Over here in a row settings, I'm going to go to the third column here, go to the advanced, go to scroll effects, and for the sticky position, I want this to stick this to the top. All right, just like that. Watch what happens here. I'm gonna go to my website and I'm gonna scroll down. As I scroll down, this whole section is gonna stay with the user. Now, this is a very popular marketing tactic that people use to get people to buy a specific product, right? Maybe right here, you might wanna put something like, oh, if you buy so-and-so, you get 30% off and keep having it scroll as the user scrolls. In fact, on my website, DarylWilson.com, I actually use this same feature. So this is my website, DarylWilson.com, and this is a Divi Bars plugin. And as I scroll down, you guys can see this is just a basic review. But as if I keep scrolling on the right side, you're gonna see that this bar stays in place. So uh, it shows the user all this information and they can read about it. And as they read about it, they might be convinced and uh, influenced to purchase the product. Once that happens, they then click on the button and they go to the website. If I, you know, if they click on it and they purchase something, I then do make a commission. So this is how you guys can use the actual uh, sticky feature on your website. Now you guys can also apply it to specific elements. So let's say for example, you wanted only a specific element to actually have that feature of the scroll effects. You can do stick to the top for any elements and that element will stick to the top as the user scrolls the actual page. 
and then it'll fall back in place once the user scrolls up. Now, Elegant Themes does have a lot of really cool options and features on how to use this and utilize it in a really nice way. So I'll go ahead and put that in the description of this video as well for you guys to check out later. All right, guys, you guys are doing really good. Uh, we're almost done with the homepage. Now let's talk about some other modules that you might wanna use just in case you might come across them and you're not sure what they are. And one of those is the actual blog module. Now, later in this video, I will be showing you guys how to actually make a blog. However, when you guys create blog posts, you guys can have them propagate here automatically. And then you guys can also go ahead and design your actual blog modules. So for example, this is our demo website here. And these are actually our blog posts. And as you guys can tell, they look really good. And what we've done here is we've actually uh, added in these blog modules here. So and every time we make a post, they will display right here under the news and article section automatically. And you guys can also design your actual blog element. So for example, you can see that we have this blog here and for the design, uh, we can design every part of the actual blog. So we can design the title right here by you know changing the actual font to you know whatever. And then we can also do the same thing for the meta text. And then there's other options where we can actually show um, how much excerpt, right? So here we have the excerpt. And I can say, you know what? I wanna show like 50 characters of the excerpt. Excerpt is like the actual characters of the actual blog, right? So you can control how much content you want to display on your actual homepage. We'll talk more about blogs a little bit later in this video, but I just wanted to introduce you all to the blog module. It is very popular. A lot of users tend to use them because you can make some really nice looking blog posts with it. But uh, yeah, that is the example of a blog module. And guys, this is the very last section of the homepage. And just by looking at this, I think you guys can already know what this is, right? So we have a two column row, right? We have a two column row, and this is a text, a text, a text, and a button. And here we have an actual image. Now I'm actually not going to create this because I think you guys already know what this is. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quiz and show you guys some websites and you guys can let me know what structure you think it is. All right, so this is the Isaac template kit that you guys can download on our website. Now, this template kit's very interesting because what we've done here is we actually used a two column row, just like previously, but we didn't really need to, right? And over here under the gear icon for the background, uh, we actually put this as a background, right? So uh, we just added a white background and we just added in this image. And for this image, we actually just, um, you know, we just put it in the top right. Now we could have done a lot of different things here, right? So I could have actually covered this, but that doesn't really look good, right? And that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So we wanted to just make it a little bit more elegant by fitting it and then putting it to the top right. Now I could have put it to the center or I could have put it to the uh, center left, but that really would make a lot of sense, right? It doesn't look good and it actually overlaps the text. So we decided to put this to the actual, oops, to the actual right side right here. So center right to give it this, you know, this elegant look right here. So this next section, these are just blurbs. And what we've done here is we actually added a border to every column to give it some sort of design, right? Now, this is a very interesting use of the actual border here, but over here under the actual row settings, for the first column under the design section, under border, there's an option here where you guys can actually add a border here to every side, right? You can add a border to the bottom, you see that? Or we can add a border to the left, like that, or border to the actual top, like that. But what we've done here is we just wanted to only add it on one side just to give it some sort of, you know, just, just to give it some sort of flavor, right? So that's how we achieved uh, this section. We added a blurb to every one, and then we added a border with one pixel in between every single module. And this section here, you know, this is a text module, an image, uh, an image, right? So this is just a two column row. You guys probably already know how to do that. Now this next section, we just basically made another specialty section. So we added in three column row with blurbs like that, right? And then we just stack the elements over here on top of each other, and then we just design them. So again, you guys can download this template kit for free if you guys want, it's on my website. So you guys can sort of practice with it and get a little bit more information on how to achieve specific looks. And one more demo here, which is the famous Finley kit. This was a very popular e-commerce tutorial that I created. This is actually another just two column row, right? Two column row. 
Now this last section that I'm gonna show you guys, this was actually very complicated. I know this looks really easy, but this was a lot of work. We had to really think outside of the box here. So uh, this is a specialty section, okay? And this is a teal section with one column and another teal section with two columns. This section right here is only one element. What we actually did here is we actually added a background image behind the text, right? So this is an actual text setting, right? This is just a little text module, just like on our other pages, we have this text. Uh, this is actually the background, right? So what we did here is we actually added a background to the actual text module. Right here, we'll go ahead and scroll down and click on background. And then we'll click on the actual image. So there it is, you know, we added in the, uh, we added in the actual image here uh, to the entire module itself. This gave it this really nice effect. And then we had to force the image to stay inside of this box. So it was a lot of work. I know it looks a little easy, but it's very responsive. And it also has that really nice parallax effect. Uh, for this one here as well, uh, you can see that we added the background to the actual row setting. So over here under the actual row setting, we added in the background right there. This is just a text module, a text module, and then this right here is a button. Now this looks like text, but it's actually a button module. We just decided to take everything out. So it has no border basically. I know we just, we just get creative sometimes, you know, we just get creative. And this right here is just another text module, right? A text module. And this one right here as well, it's another text module. And this is a two column row. So this actually was a lot more complicated to make than we thought it was. I'm just showing you guys that you guys can pretty much get creative and make anything that you guys want with the Divi theme. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is the very last part of the homepage tutorial where I show you guys how to actually make these blocked and how to stretch them across. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this, but I just wanna walk you guys through on how it's to achieve the look that I have on the demo website. You guys ready? Here we go. This is the very last section of the homepage tutorial. So I do hope you guys really did enjoy it. I hope you guys saw enough, but let's go ahead and further increase your knowledge by showing you guys how to achieve the grid look with the blurbs. So let's go over here to the settings icon for the design, for the spacing. I also want zero for everything, right? We want zero for everything. Okay. And I also want to go ahead and go to the sizing, turn on the gutter width. And then we're also going to get rid of the gutter width and equalize the column heights, right? Makes sense. Now for the width, we're gonna make it 100%. And for the actual max width, we are then going to extend this to the end of the websites. And then I'll go ahead and put maybe like, I don't know, 2000 pixels, right? 2000 pixels. Now, since I did this, we probably have to do some adjustment here to the actual inside of the actual uh, module because it doesn't look correct like this. But if we actually uh, center align everything, it might look a little bit better, right? So for the design here, we're gonna go to the actual text, center align that. And for this icon here, we'll do the same thing. We'll center align it. And then we'll do the same thing for this section here, right? So for the actual text, we're going to center align this. And then we'll do the same thing for the button. There we go, design, align, and there you go. So that looks a lot nicer. Um, it does look a little different from our demo, but if you guys do wanna check out the actual demo and actually open it up inside and see exactly how we did it, um, you guys can go ahead and check it out. Essentially, it's the same thing here. Uh, we just added more padding, right? That's pretty much all we did, but essentially it's the same exact thing. Now you guys know me, right? I'm lazy. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna right click on this and we're going to extend these blurb styles to everything in this row. All right, and we'll do the same thing for the text. So right click, we will extend the text styles to everything in this row. Right, look at that, look at that. And then we're going to also copy, I'm sorry, extend this. There it is, it's way down there, all right, to this section or to this row. All right, so that's it. That's how you guys can make the uh, grid section. I also did it right here as well. 
Um, and make sure to practice, guys. This is all about practicing. Hope you guys enjoyed the homepage section of this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a lot of really creative tricks on how to design your Divi websites. And with that said, let's go ahead and import the rest of this homepage. All right, so now that you guys know how to build a website, now let's go ahead and import the other pages for this template kit. Now, uh, on my website, I actually do have templates uh, just for Divi. I also do have other templates that we are currently creating. And by the time you guys are uh, done watching this video, we will have all of these available for you guys for free that you can easily import on your website with a few clicks. Me and my designers, we did spend a lot of time making these layouts for you guys, and we have a lot more to come. So I really do hope you guys enjoy these free layouts. Now to access these layouts, you just need to go to my website, dearwilson.com and click on view layouts. You will then click on the Divi theme templates. And we do have quite a bit that we have actually made. Uh, we're in the process right now of reorganizing all of these template kits. So just give us some time. In a few weeks, it'll look really, it'll look really nice, trust me. So uh, here we have the Divi Arias layout. All right, and here is the Arias layout. Once you guys are here, just click on add to cart. It's completely free, doesn't cost you guys anything. Just view the cart. We'll then go to proceed to checkout. Also guys, I will be having a follow-up video uh, on how to make an e-commerce website with Divi. That'll be out in a few weeks, so just stay tuned. Here, I'll click on place order. And then you'll see that you have this zip file right here that you can download. So go ahead and click on this folder and it'll then show you the, the zip file. You just need to open that file and then you can actually use those on the actual website. So let's go back to our website here. And what I'm gonna do is just click on this empty page. Now I'll click on enable the visual builder. This is a really cool trick. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this really quick. We have the Arias right here, right? Built from scratch. And what I wanna do here is I just wanna actually just drag and drop this whole thing here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and take the actual about us and I can just drag it onto the page. Here, I'm going to uh, just import the Divi Builder layout. And I'll go ahead and open this up. And now it's importing the actual about us page that I created for you guys. And there it is. So let's take a quick look here, make sure everything looks great. And look at that, guys. You guys have a beautiful website uh, that we have made just for you guys. So uh, yeah, you guys can use all of the other pages here. Uh, you just need to delete this one little section and then save it. And you're done. And then we just have to do that for the other template kits here. So uh, services, enable visual builder, and I'll just drag and drop those. Now, if you guys do get any errors, uh, I'll go ahead and leave uh, a few articles about if you do get uh, errors, like it says, uh, cannot import in this context or something. There are a lot of errors that you may get, and a lot of those are just due to server settings. Here, I'll take this uh, services and drop it here, import the layout, and I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger. And there you go. So now we have the services page, and I'll delete that. Make sure everything looks great. And look at that. So we have a really nice looking uh, services page. So let's do the last one, which is the contact us page. All right, exit the visual builder and click on contact us. I will enable this, shrink this up just a little bit. And then I will go ahead and take the last part, which is the, is it the contact us and then just drag and drop. Here you go import and import the Divi Builder layout. All right, cool. So I'll go ahead and close that, save this, and just make sure I can see everything that's going on right here. All right, and there we go. Now this is the actual contact form. Uh, these actually go directly to your email. Right here under the actual gear icon, here you have the name, the email, and the message. Now you guys can actually add more fields on your contact forms, like this can be like uh, quotes or offer or phone number, right? This a required field. Now the Divi contact form is very robust. There is a lot you can do with this. Uh, there is conditional logic. 
I do have a video on this. However, it's a little old, so I will be making a new video on the Divi contact form. I don't want to make it now or introduce this now just because it's a lot to talk about and I don't want this video to get like, you know, five, six, seven hours long. So uh, yeah, I will be making a updated video on the contact form. All right, and right here you'll see email. You'll want to go ahead and put in your email address there. So I'll put in my email address. Now, if you don't put anything here by default, it will send the email to the admin email that you have on file with WordPress uh, in the general settings. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on save. This is just playing like this for a specific reason, and I'll talk more about this in the very next section. All right, so I went ahead and I saved it, and now I'll click on exit the visual builder. Next, you guys will need to add a recapture to this in order to prevent your uh, messages from going to spam, which is a very common thing with WordPress. Uh, here we have email. You'll want to go ahead and select the email that you want the message to go to. And then you have spam protection. Here we're going to click on use a spam protection service. And we also have recapture, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly add a recapture here. You guys don't have to follow me here, but if you guys do want to know how to do this, I'll walk you guys through it. I'm going to go ahead and go to Google. I'm going to type in Google recapture here. And we're going to click on this right here. We're then going to go to the version admin three console. And then we're going to add a site. From here, I'm going to enter my my domain tutorial. This will really help you guys with spam. Trust me, you guys will get a lot of spam here. So I will accept the service and I will submit. All right, and now we have these settings. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these and we're going to go back to my website. I'm going to leave that as default and I'm just going to put the site key here. And then I'll go ahead and also paste the secret key right here. All right, cool. Now that should prevent it from going to spam. And if that does not work, you guys can actually Google a uh, SMPT uh, plugin that all you need to do is activate a plugin and that should prevent it from going to spam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and write a quick message here. So Daryl, uh, Daryl at able.com. Hey man, and then what's up? I don't know, just, just whatever. This can be like a phone number or something, who knows? And I'll go ahead and click on send. Now I'll go ahead and check my email box. And there it is. So the first message here, you guys can see I just got it. This is in my normal inbox. If I click on this, you will see that uh, this has been sent to my uh, email. So uh, we can see that it has not been sent to my spam. If it's if you still have issues, guys, contact your host. Maybe they can help you guys out. It's sometimes weird stuff happens and if it doesn't work for you, I'm really sorry, but just keep keep trying. I promise it'll work. All right, so now that you guys have a fully completed website and your contact form is working, now let's talk about the next options, which are the theme customizer and the Divi options. All right, so in this section, let's talk about the Divi options along with the theme customizer. Now, in the beginning of the video, I did briefly mention the theme customizer, and I told you guys that we'll be, we'll be coming to that a little bit later, and now is that later. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the Divi options. So there's a few Divi options here. There's the actual Divi options, the Divi theme builder, the customizer, the role editor, and then the library and the support center. Uh, the support center, this is where you guys can get support for Divi. So if you guys do start getting glitches and bugs, you guys can go over here and chat with support. You guys also might need to enable remote access. This gives the, the team over at Divi a uh, full access to the back end of your website. So they can go ahead and take a look to see if there's any bugs or glitches that are reported or that you may have come across. Next, you have the actual Divi library. Remember earlier how we created that Divi button? Well, this is where you can edit the button. So this is where you can create specific modules, right? You can add this in your library. So for example, add new, you can give the name of your layouts. You can set it as a module or save as a global. A global means when you adjust this one button, it will reflect all the buttons on the page that are attached as a global. You can create new categories for it and also create new tags for it as well. So this will just be like a section or something. And then from here, you can start building whatever you want it to build. So you can go ahead and build your specific section and it'll be saved in the Divi library. You can also make it on the front end. It really doesn't matter. You can make it on the front end or the back end. It's all the same result. But uh, let's go back over here. And next we have the role editor. 
The role editor essentially gives specific roles, you know, for users on your website to access specific parts of the website. For example, a contributor. This, these are the options a contributor has access to. They have access to the visual builder, a moving item, all this other stuff. Let's say, for example, you have a customer and they want access to your website, but you don't want them to edit the items or you don't want them to move stuff. You can go ahead and restrict the access for this specific role. Here, I'll click on save roles really quick. Now you guys can add a user at any time by going over here to users and clicking on all users. Here is a list of the users on your website, but if you want to create a new one, you'll click on add new. This will be Jenny, Jenny, uh, and then, you know, this would be like your client's email, right? This is just an example. So I'll just do like Jenny Craig, and this would be the password. And under the role section, this is where you can assign the role. So they can be a contributor, an author, an editor, or administrator. And this is where you can essentially hand the website over to your clients. And I'll just click on add new. And there you go. So now the uh, Jenny, she can now access the website and log in on the back end without having full capabilities of using all parts of the website. Uh, the role editor is made specifically in order to prevent clients and other users from pretty much destroying the website. I also do have another video that talks about how to make a web design business from scratch. It's, it's very long, it's six hours long. But this video, it goes in detail into everything you can possibly need to know. And since you guys already know how to use Divi, you guys can just watch this video and learn about how to price your website, how to deal with contracts, uh, maintenance services, SEO, irate customers, billing clients, contracts. This is like the, the, the only thing you'll ever need uh, to start a web design business. So you guys can tell a lot of people are liking it. There's a lot of views on it. And uh, I just made it a few weeks ago. So it's a, it's a brand new video. So I think it'll bring a lot of value. But that's what the role editor is explained. It's a really handy, especially when you hand the website over to your clients. Now I'm gonna skip these two and go to Divi theme options. So this is where you guys can upload your logo. Here, I'll click on upload and we're going to upload our logo here. And next you have the fixed navigation bar. This is essentially the bar at the top of the menu. As you scroll, it will stay uh, with your uh, visitor. So it's just a fixed menu pretty much. It's like a sticky menu. There are a lot of other options. Like if you want a uh, sidebar layout, there's also some new options guys that I have really no idea what they do like blog style mode and the DV gallery. I'm not really sure what these do. If you guys do just like, you know, turn them on and save them, uh, I'm sure they'll pop up somewhere. But uh, the blog style mode, that's a brand new feature and I'm not too familiar on it just yet. Now, also, if you guys do have like a Google API key, this is where you're going to enter it. You guys will need this for your contact form. Remember on the contact form, how the maps were not working? Uh, this is where you guys can enter in the Google API key where you can have the Google Maps uh, run on your websites. And then over here, you have some social media profiles. These are uh, important if you enable this on your menu. So these will be the links that will be propagated on your menu. And there are some other general options like smooth scrolling and the back to top. These are really, there are two really cool options that I think everyone should turn on by default. This essentially gives you the back to top button at the bottom right of the screen and smooth scrolling makes it so when you scroll on your website, it's very smooth and it's not like jagged and stuff like that. So that's what the smooth scrolling effect is. And uh, I'll go ahead and click on save changes. Here you have some other options. Like if you want to hide specific pages from the menu, you guys can do that. Uh, I, I don't really know the reason why they have that, but uh, it's just an option. And they do have some other options here as well. The general settings. And over here, we have the builder options where you can turn the Divi builder on post pages and projects layouts. This is essentially for blog posts. So uh, if you don't want to show comments on posts, you can turn those off or you can disable the thumbs off posts as well. And then, you know, you guys can just check out these general settings. So the layout is referring to posts. Okay, and the general settings is referring to like a global post, which is all of the posts on your websites. We will make blog posts in the very next section, but this is where you have a little bit more, you know, options to mess around with it and stuff like that. And then there's ads, which I never use. SEO, to be honest, I'm not sure. I don't really use this either, to be honest. 
And then we do have some integrations here and then just some updates where you can add in your API key and stuff like that. So uh, those are the Divi theme options. If they don't apply to you, you don't have to use them, but they're just additional options that you may need or may want to mess around with. Now we'll talk about the theme builder in another chapter, but the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the theme customizer. So I'm gonna make sure I click on save changes here and we'll go click on visit sites. Now you guys can also access the theme customizer at any time by going up here to my blog and clicking on theme customizer. One thing guys is if it looks like this, don't worry about it. The theme customizer is actually uh, squishing the actual website. So it might look a little different when you have the theme customizer on. Uh, so don't panic here. Let's click that at the top that we enabled earlier. The, the things that I want to talk about here is the actual menu and stuff like that. So first let's click on general settings, site identity. Here you have the site name, the tagline, and also the site icon. Here you can see that we have this little YouTube icon. If you want to add in your own site icon, let's go ahead and add it in here. My icon, you know, like something like that. All right, so you can pretty much add in your logo there, right? So it appears in the uh, tabs. Uh, here we have layout settings. If you guys do want to have like a box layout on your websites, or you want to adjust the width of the website, you can also do it here. Uh, these will actually apply on the entire website. So just be mindful about that. And topography, I wouldn't mess with this. This is essentially if you want to adjust like the fonts and the colors, uh, this would override the current page builder settings. So uh, the Divi theme and the page builder, they kind of go against each other sometimes. So if you are adjusting things over here, just make sure that it doesn't reflect the website. And if it does, you can go ahead and fix it with the builder. Uh, backgrounds, I wouldn't use that at all because uh, we use a page builder, obviously. So next we have the header and navigation, and this is very important. So this is controlling the actual menu of your websites. Here we have header format. And what's really cool is that we can do centered, right? Center and line with logo. We can do slide in, or if I click on it, it'll slide in like that. Or we can do full screen, which is it'll essentially just cover the entire screen like that. But here I'll go ahead and just click on default. Now we can also enable vertical uh, navigation where we have the menu on the left side. And this is just some sort of look and style. You can have this on the left and the right side of the page, but I'm just going to turn that off. Here you have the primary menu bar. You can make this full width and you know, you can even hide the logo if you want to do that. Uh, you guys can also adjust the fonts here. So I think by now we're using Jost, right? Or something like that, or Jost, right? There's a lot of fonts these guys have. Jeez, <laughs> they have uh, they have quite a bit here, you know, Jost, and we'll bold it. There we go. And then we can adjust the background color here if you want to do that. But uh, I'm just going to make it transparent like that because I kind of like this, this, uh, this background here like that. That's pretty much it. These are where you can control the actual uh, primary menu. We also have the secondary menu. The secondary menu is if you have a drop down menu. So let's say, for example, if we have this drop down menu right here, I'll go ahead and turn it on really quick. Menus, main menus, and I'll just go ahead and drag this under here. And this will then create a secondary menu like that. You see that? So that's how you can create a drop down menu. And then from there, under the header navigations, you can actually start adjusting all of those settings uh, right here under the secondary menu bar. Fixed navigation. This is if it scrolls down like that. You see how it scrolls down, how we have a fixed navigation. Now you can disable this in the actual options. And if you want to design this fixed navigation where when the user scrolls down, this is where you're going to design it. So you can see here how we change it to black, right? That doesn't look too good. So we're going to change it back. All right, so next we have the footer. The footer is probably another very important option here. And this allows you to use the footer with Divi. Now, later in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a custom footer uh, using the actual theme builder, but you guys can also use the actual footer builder from the actual WordPress theme. So for example, I'll click on layouts. We will select this uh, four column row, right? And this background color is just fine. You know, maybe we can actually make it just a little bit more faint something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to add widgets. So essentially what widgets are, there are these little things that we can add here. You can adjust the actual widgets. You know, you can change the text color and you can adjust the actual here. Let's go ahead and change this to white. It looks a little bit better, right? 
And you know, this is where you can design and everything and make it look cool and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to black really quick, just to give you guys a better feel and visual of everything. So um, footer elements, here you have these social icons here at the bottom. You see those? If you wanna have those on, you can turn those on or off. Now remember, you can link the social icons in the Divi theme options. Remember the theme options, what I showed you guys earlier, how you can enable the actual um, URL. That's where you would go ahead and enter it in the Divi theme options. The footer menu, you guys can go ahead and design the footer menu as well. And then you also have the bottom bar. The bottom bar is this bottom part right here. So if you wanna change that, you can disable the footer credits or you can just change it, you know, to uh, whatever you want. You know, you can see here I'm typing it and that would be something like, uh, you know, darylwilson.com whatever, whatever you guys want to add. And then this is where you can design that bottom one uh, where you can, you know, change the look and feel of it if you decide to do that, right? Change this text color to white. All right, cool. Now let's talk about how to add widgets to this uh, footer area, right? So here, let's click on widgets. Here you have footer area one. Now, what do you want to add in footer area one? Well, right, well, I'm going to go ahead and first uh, delete all these things because this is really annoying. I'll remove this. And we're gonna get rid of this, get rid of this. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all these boxes here because I just don't really want them. All right. Now I'm gonna click on this little add a block. And you know, we can have a lot of blocks here. So we can click on browse all, and then you guys can add in blocks here. Here I'll put in the page list, right? Like the home, the about, the contact, the services. All right, cool. Now let's add in another block, area two. I'll turn this on and uh, I'll click on browse all. And uh, I don't know, what do you wanna put here? You know, we can we can add in a lot of stuff here, like a Facebook like box, we can add in a, a social feed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can add to our footer, but to speed this up, I'll just add a quick calendar. All right, little cute calendar, right? All right, cool, we got, we got a calendar, awesome. And then over here, we can add in one more and this would be like, just like an image of something right? We'll just throw it in like, maybe you can offer like a, a promotional image, maybe you have like a sale or something. Um, you can add it in there. Or you can put like offers or discounts or coupon codes or something like that. I'm just going to put in this random image here and just and see what that all right, whatever. <laughs> that works. All right. And then this right here, I'll just go ahead and put in some paragraph text. And then I'll put about us. And then, you know, you can just put like a biography. Welcome to DarylWilson.com, where we teach how to make websites. All right, cool, awesome. And I'll click on publish. So that's how you guys can add widgets to the bottom of your page and create a footer using the actual Divi theme. Now, a lot of these other options here, I would not mess with them too much because a lot of these will actually override the actual buttons on your page, like the buttons, the color schemes and stuff like that. Here we have mobile styles. This is actually showing you what it looks like on mobile devices. Uh, we do have a little bit of work to do. We did not optimize this site for mobile just yet. And we will do that in the very next section. But uh, I'm not really sure why they have this here because we can actually check out the mobile styles from the actual page builder. So that's pretty much it for the actual theme customizer. Uh, you guys can check out the blog as well. The blog post, you guys can actually uh, design the actual blog post right here once we do create blog post. All right, but the theme customizer does not play that much big of a role besides adjusting the home page and also adjusting the actual header and the footer of your actual um, uh, website. How did this get here? 222, huh? How did that get here? The header elements, huh? We can turn those on like that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. We're going to turn those off. I, I don't know what that's about, but. You turn those on and once you click on publish, you should get another menu at the top right here. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that did that, that bugged out, but here you can add in a little bit more icons and stuff to the top of the menu if you choose to do that. All right, so now that we talked about the Divi theme options and the Divi theme customizer, now let's talk about post and also projects. All right, so in this section, I'll be showing you guys how to add blog posts, how to add them to the menu, and also explain projects. Now, uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a page for our blog posts. So let's go to plus new and go to page. And this will be the actual blog, right? 
I'll click on publish and publish. Now let's go ahead and go back to our website here. And now let's access the theme customizer. So over here, we'll go to theme customizer. We're now going to go down to home page settings. And for our post page, I want to set that to the blog. So I want the blog to be the page where all the posts are prop propagated for our users. Now, uh, what I also want to do is I want to add it to the menu right here. So let's go back and I'll show you guys a little shortcut. So right here, menus, the main menu, I'm going to add a new item here. And I'm going to add the actual blog here. And then I'll rearrange that right here. And I'll click on publish. Now I can go ahead and close this theme customizer. All right, so now we have this blog page. So if I click on blog, this is where the blog posts will be displayed automatically. Now you don't have to use the blog uh, page if you want. I do recommend it. But remember, you can also add in the element here uh, on the actual page where you can also have the blog post propagate as well. You can also have both. So you can have it on your home page and also a standard blog uh, page as well. Now let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard here and let's click on posts. So these are all the posts that you create, right? So here they have like a default post, but uh, let's just go ahead and add a new post right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the default editor for this specific example. This is going to be 10 things women love about men. Okay, hold on. There we go. It's all right. I'm not looking at my keyboard. And I'm going to take some demo content here because I know if I if I actually write like a real article, I'll, there's this will get really like controversial and there'll be like hate comments and stuff. So let's just let's just ignore that. All right, we're just going to go ahead and just uh, use some demo content here. They also do have some other options like, uh, you know, this is a new editor called Gutenberg. Gutenberg is coming out. It's newer. Um, but yeah, at the time of making this video, I really wouldn't use Gutenberg to build websites with. It's the default editor that is used with WordPress. Uh, but what to know here is that uh, once you guys create your blog post, you'll see this categories. So here we need to create a new category, right? So this will be like dating, right? This will be the dating category. And what this means is all of the blog posts that deal with dating uh, will have the category of dating. And also we have tags. So this will just be dating, right? And here is the featured image. So this is the image that represents the actual article. What's a good one here, guys? What's a good one? Okay, this guy, he's looking at, he's looking at the, the girl or he's looking at you like, you know, he wants to say something. So once that's done, I'll click on publish and publish and we can actually view the post here. All right, so 10 things women love about men. Uh, we can see that there is the picture of the guy and then there is the actual blog post and users can submit a comment and all that cool stuff. Now they can also click on the uh, blog and they can view it right here. All right, so this is where all the blogs will be propagated on your websites. All right, pretty cool. Now this is one way on how to add a blog page to your website. However, I don't like this method because you guys cannot actually design this page and it's just basically fully propagated and it doesn't really look that good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go to plus new and go to page. And what we can do here is that we can actually make a custom blog page using the actual Diva Builder. So here I'll type in custom blog. I'll click on publish and publish. And now I want to click on use the Divi Builder. All right, here I'm going to uh, build this from scratch. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually take one of my old template kits here and I'm just going to drag it and, and not the home one. I don't want the home one here. I'm going to take the, uh, the services and I'm just going to drag this and import this builder really quick. All right, so here is the template kits and I'm just going to change this to blog. <laughs> That's it. And, uh, you know, I can keep some of the stuff here, you know, if I want to add more to it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything off of this page. I just wanted to take that one section from the actual layout here and just use that for my blog. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff here. I uh, keep deleting it. And there you go. Now here under the, the new section, I'll click on regular and then I'll just make a new uh, row right here and then put in blog. Right. 
And what I like about the blog setting here is I don't want to use this whole image by default. I want to change this to um, the actual grid. So for the design under layouts, we can change this to grid. And here you'll see this is a list of all the blog posts that will be propagated on your website. So I'll click on this check. And then I'll also click on save. So I like this method a lot better. You know, I, I like the fact that this blog post looks a lot nicer and neater. Um, now, if you want to use this as your standard blog post, back in the theme customizer settings, just go ahead and turn off the actual blog post page. Uh, so for example, the home page settings, you would just go ahead and just leave that off, right? And then over here, and then for this page, you just need to assign it to the menu instead of the default blog page. So we can do that right here by going over to menus. And I wanna add the custom blog to the page and I wanna get rid of that old default one that the theme was using, right? So uh, custom blog and click on save menu. All right, so now that I've actually added that to the menu, if I click on custom blog here, uh, you can then see that we have now uh, used this as our primary blog page. So all of the blog posts that we create will be propagated here automatically. And also don't forget, you guys can turn on the Divi Builder and you guys can design these blogs the way you want it to look. So for the design tab, uh, for like the, the layout and the overlay, uh, we can add a lot of stuff to this, right? Uh, so for example, if I hover over it, you can see that we can add some sort of overlay color to it. Um, for the text, we probably want to change the title text to our Jost font, right? Jost. Like that. And then also we can do the same thing for the body text, right? Jost. All right, so that looks a lot cleaner already. And then also this one here, we can also change this to Jost as well. And uh, maybe you want to make this one a little bit more larger, right? So we can make this just a tad bigger right? And we can give it like a darker color here. And yeah, something like that. So uh, we can fully design this. You guys can also adjust the background to it and uh, go ahead and look up some tutorials on, you know, custom blog posts. There's so many different ways on how to customize this to fit the style and criteria of your uh, current theme and website. So I'm going to click on save here. So showing you guys how to create a blog page and also a blog post. But did you guys also know that we can actually make blog posts using the actual Divi Builder? Uh, up here under plus new, I'll click on posts. And this will be 10 things women hate about men. There you go. And instead of using the default editor, we can actually use the Divi Builder. So let's click on use the Divi Builder. Now, instead of actually building this from scratch, let's actually choose a pre-made layout. Now, when you guys purchase Divi, there are tons of layouts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down over here to the, uh, we can type in blog, right? And here, I'll just use this uh, About Us blog page. I'll just click on Use This Layout. Now, in order to get these layouts, you guys must enter your Divi uh, API key in the Divi theme options. If you guys do not uh, set that, then it will ask you to enter it and it will prompt you to enter the uh, key code for these layouts. All right, and here we go. So now you can see we have the blog post, 10 things women hate about, oh, I think me. <laughs> I should have put men there, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> and here you go. So now we can actually design the actual blog post using the actual Divi Builder. And you can build this blog post just the way like we did on the homepage, except this would be for your blog post. Now, if I click on post right here and I scroll down, first I'll put this under dating. And if I scroll down under the Divi page settings, I wanna make sure that this is full width right here. We can even disable like the post title and stuff like that, dot navigation. We can have other you know options right here. I'll just click on update again, and then I'll click on view the post. And now you'll see that the blog post is here and it's full width. Maybe we should actually probably just get rid of that title. It looks really weird, but uh, I'm just showing you that you guys can use the Divi Builder to build out your blog post. And we do have these really cool little dot navigations where users can scroll on your blog. So that is pretty cool. So next we have the projects, hey, right? Listen. So I showed you guys how to create blog posts with Divi and the Divi Builder, and also how to create a custom blog page with Divi. Now let's talk about the actual projects. So over here, I'll go to dashboard, and you'll notice that we have this project section. So here you can see all of your projects. We don't have any yet, but if you wanna create some, here I'll click on add new. 
And this will be like the main Divi project. And I can use the Divi Builder and I can create some sort of project, right? Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to set a featured image really quick. And I'll use this guy right here. Or actually, I'll, I'll use this little uh, rocket, Rakito, or if you call it, something like that. And then for the default editor, I'll just put like, this is a demo. So essentially, you guys can use the Divi Builder as well, and you guys can create some really nice showcases and portfolios. But uh, I'm gonna click on publish here and publish just to give you an example. So here I'll click on view the project. So this is the actual project, right? And you guys might wanna actually get rid of this right sidebar. That's really irritating and that doesn't really look good. Uh, let's go ahead and just quickly get rid of that. For the page layouts, just put no sidebar. You know, no sidebar, that's really irritating and then click on update. And here I'll click on view project. So this is the actual uh, Divi project, right? And uh, yeah, this is where you can showcase skills and stuff like that. Now, I bet you're wondering, well, how do we get this to propagate on our uh, page or something like that? Let's go over here to services. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to enable the visual builder. All right, and what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just going to go ahead and add in a new section here, a new row. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of these modules really quick. So here we have portfolio, right? I'll go ahead and click on portfolio. And there is the main Divi, uh, this is the main Divi project. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is go to design and I'm gonna make this a grid layout. All right, so there it is, the Divi project. Now you guys can also design this as well. You guys can go through these design options. You can add a background. You can change the, uh, you know, whatever you wanna do, uh, like the content and everything. You can also create categories for projects as well. Uh, you can change the background color to you know any color that you guys want. Again, you guys can fully customize this project. But um, here I'll go ahead and just change that back to layout and grid. And I'll just go ahead and save this. Okay, so let's say for example, you are creating portfolios for your clients or something, or you wanna showcase uh, websites or something like that. You guys can actually uh, use the project. And if a user clicks on this Divi project, they will then be brought to the actual project here where you can showcase your portfolio, your pictures, your web design skills, or anything that you want to showcase on your website. So that's how you guys would use the projects on your Divi website. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it for this section. I hope you guys understand what blog posts are and how to make them, and also what the Divi projects uh, tab was. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, guys, welcome to step four. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Divi advanced features. Uh, so now that you guys are pros, you know, you can build a website with the modules and stuff and have background colors. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys these Divi advanced features. Now, as you were building your website, you guys probably saw a lot of really weird options here and there that you weren't familiar with. We'll go ahead and walk you guys through uh, most of the Divi theme advanced features. Our special guests will also show you some really cool tips and tricks with Divi. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. All right, guys, in this part of the video, I'll be explaining a lot of the Divi theme advanced options and features that come with Divi. Now, when you guys were using the Divi Builder, you guys might have seen a lot of options here that you guys might not be familiar with. So I'll go ahead and explain to you a majority of these features as best as I can. Now, the first feature is called the Lottie uh, files animation. So here you guys can see that we have this uh, Lottie file. Now Divi now integrates with Lottie files. So you can see here how you can now add these to your WordPress website. So it's really simple, right? You would just go to your websites and you would just, um, you know, open a new column or new whatever. Here I'll just open up a new row, right? And over here for the module, we're going to select the code module. I'll select the code module. And now we have this uh, empty box right here where we can insert some code. So we can go to lottiefiles.com. This is a website where you guys can search for pretty much everything as far as animations go. So I'll put in like a, a woman, right? And then it'll give us a bunch of uh, files that we can use on our website. So I'll just go ahead and grab in, I don't know, I'll just grab in this, uh, this girl right here. And then we'll scroll down. Now you guys will need to make an account. It's completely free to make an account. It does not cost you guys anything whatsoever. Uh, right here, I'm gonna click on HTML. 
and we'll scroll down. Now we have a few options here. So this is basically saying, uh, how big do you want this Lottie file? Well, we can say something like 500 by 500. And right here, you can see that we have these controls, right? But I don't want the controls, so I'm going to take those off. And I want this to autoplay. Now you can also uh, set this to uh, play on hover if you guys choose to do that. But uh, I think this is just fine. Here, I'll click on copy code, right? And we'll go back to the website, and then we'll go ahead and paste the code in here. And then I will uh, hit the checkbox. Now, the only drawback here is that you guys cannot see the actual Lottie file until you actually close the Divi Builder. So I'm gonna do that, all right, here we go. I'm going to uh, save the changes. And if we scroll down, we can now see that the Lottie file uh, displays. So Lottie files are pretty cool, you know. Um, for this creativity layout, we did add a lot of the Lottie file animations here with the actual website. Uh, if you guys do add Lottie files, be a little bit consistent, you know, use the same structure. Uh, try not to just grab random ones from different uh, sets because it doesn't really look well. Here you guys can see that we picked a lot of the, uh, the Lottie files from uh, the same, you know, the same style, stuff like that. So it works uh, with our website. So that is how you guys can add Lottie files to your website. Now the next feature is called find and replace. What this is going to do is that it's going to find elements on your website and it's going to uh, copy the styles throughout the website. Let me give you guys an example. I'm gonna click on enable the visual builder. So let's say for example, you guys want to change all the buttons on your website or all the text without having to modify everything, right? So for example, we have this button here and we also have this button here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually gonna change this button and I'm gonna change all the buttons on the entire website. So right here, I'll double click and open up the settings. For the design tab, I'll go to the button and then go to the actual background color. I'll go ahead and right click on this and find the uh, find and replace option. So I'll click on find and replace. I'll go ahead and copy this code before I get rid of it. Now with this option, I'm basically saying, I want to take all of the background colors uh, from this uh, you know, section or module, you have a bunch of options, but uh, I'm just gonna say, I want to change all of the modules from this color to a red color. And if I do that, the button module, you guys can see here, will all adjust to red. So I'll go ahead and click on replace. And now you see that this is red and also this is red and any other button module on the entire websites. Uh, I don't think I have anymore. Oh, here's another one. This will all be changed to red. Now let's say for example, uh, you wanna do this for another module, right? Maybe you wanna do this for text. So I will go ahead and click on the actual module settings for this text. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this heading color, right? We have this heading color and I wanna change uh, all the modules on the page to this yellow color, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and go to replace. So what this is gonna do is that it's going to change all of the heading text from this color to yellow. This is good because it actually helps you guys speed up the entire uh, design process and it helps you get like a better visual of how everything looks, right? Instead of going to every single one, you guys can change the entire color scheme on your websites uh, from one location using the actual find and replace option. It's a really helpful feature and it really speeds up the workflow and helps you get more ideas on how to implement certain color schemes on your websites. But because this looks hideous, I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change that back, right? We're gonna go ahead and change that back and I'm going to exit and I'm not gonna save this because I don't want my site to look like that. And there you go, it's back to normal. So the next feature is called the bulk editing. Wouldn't it be nice to actually design all of these elements at one time instead of actually doing it one by one and then, you know, copying and pasting and dragging and dropping? Let's do that. I'm going to click on the uh, shift button and then press the module settings. I'll then do it again right here and again right here and then again right here. Now, remember, you must be holding the shift button. So now we have all these module settings from the module settings right here. I'll go ahead and click on it. We'll go to design and then let's say, for example, you want to see if the uh, a different font or something looks better, right? So we'll go ahead and scroll down here under the title text and we'll change this from Canit to Able. And now you guys will see that all of these modules change, right? So we have Able, we have uh, this one here, uh, we have this one here as well. 
and uh, you guys can get the point here. So this is the bulk editing. All you have to do is just go ahead and hold on shift. However, just be mindful that you must be using the same modules. If you're using different modules, it will not work. So they have to be all the same modules, but since these are all the same, we can edit them all at one time. Next, we have the Divi presets. This is very similar to the bulk editing, except it allows you to save these presets and apply them uh, to another module later. Uh, for example, I'll go ahead and click on this uh, module settings here. For the design, I'm just gonna alter this just a little bit, all right, just to give you guys an example here. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna edit this just a little bit here, uh, just so you guys can see this, right? Okay, and uh, I think from there, from there we're good, right? Now let's say for example, I wanna save this exact style for later, right? Now you might not want to add it as another module because you might just want to uh, paste it or whatever. So over here under the module settings, we have presets. Here I'm gonna go to uh, create new presets from current styles. And this will be like the red shadow blurb, right? Now you can also click on the assign preset to default. What this means is whenever you guys create a new module, it will actually propagate this same setting for the blurb module. So I'll go ahead and click on the check. All right, now, since I actually set the blurb to apply to all modules, uh, it applied it to these ones as well. Uh, but um, you guys can take that option off. But right here, I just wanna give you an example. If I type in blurb, uh, you guys will see it carries all of that same style now. So you guys can use this uh, like as a preset so you don't have to keep doing all everything all over again and it takes a long time and you guys know how that is. Uh, but what I'm gonna do over here is go over here to the icon here and for the actual default, here we have the, um, the blur preset default. We can change this or you guys can get rid of it. So you're saying, you know what? I wanna go ahead and edit the pre-styles or you can say, I just want to uh, go back to the basic one. All right, and the next few features I'm gonna show you are pretty similar. And you guys probably already know some of these because we actually use these. One of these was actually the copy module styles and pasting these. So over here, I'll go to copy module styles and I'll say, you know what? I don't like this, this is really broken up. So we're gonna go ahead and paste the module styles. And that is an example of a copy and paste where you can paste the module styles. Now the next one is called the extend styles. This is where it's pretty much the same thing, except you can extend it to all the elements on the entire row. For example, I'll go over here to the module settings and I'm gonna go to the uh, extend blurb styles. Now I want to extend the styles uh, through the entire section, row or column. But I'll just say this entire row. So what that's gonna do is that it's going to take all of these, uh, this style and it's gonna apply it to all of the modules in this row. And then I'll click on extend. All right, so now you guys can see that um, we just use the extend styles to apply the styles for all the modules in the exact row. Now the next feature is the shape dividers. I didn't really cover the shape dividers at all, but the shape dividers are actually really cool and they're used on a lot of websites. Let's say for example, you guys wanna add in some sort of animation on the top right here, or not animation, but just some sort of design, right? But you don't have like Photoshop, you also don't have an image to work with. Over here, I'll click on the gear icon and go to the, uh, I think it's under advanced, or do they move it? No, design design, and then we have the actual, uh, let's see here, dividers, there we go. So let's say for example, you wanna add dividers here at the top. You can add a divider here at the top and you can give it this little effect. You can change the color of the divider as well. You can change the height and adjust it. And there's a lot of other really cool options. You can actually flip it, you can rotate it, uh, you could put it underneath it or on top of it, just depending on if there are modules here and it might be blocking that module. So you guys can add actually these uh, dividers to you know every part of the row. Now let's say you also want to add it to the bottom. So it's like, all right, that's cool, but I also want to add a divider here uh, to the bottom of the page, and I also want to give it this blue color. So you guys can add these uh, shape dividers to the top of every section, and uh, you know you guys can get creative with it. Like for example, if you want clouds, you can say, all right, I want clouds on the top, and I also want clouds on the bottom, and you can also kind of introduce. Uh, the shape dividers in the very next section. So for example, over here, I'll go over to the design and go to the dividers. And for this one, I also want the clouds because then it, it kind of like matches, right? It makes sense. So over here, I'll click on the clouds and I'm gonna invert this. 
There we go, like that. And then I'll make it blue as well. So it looks like it's just one big cloud that kind of stretches across and it looks really, really cool. It's a really nice way to add a lot of effects and get really creative with your websites. So that's how you guys can use the Divi Shape Dividers. All right, so the next option is going to be the Divi Scroll Effects. Now I already did talk about this. However, if you guys did miss it, I'm gonna show you guys how you can make these elements drag with you throughout the website. For example, you can do this with any elements or any column or any image, any part of the website. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? I want to take this whole module and I want this to stick with me using the scroll effects. Over here under the advanced options, we're gonna go to scroll effects and I want this to uh, stick to the top, right? If I scroll up here, sorry, if I scroll down, uh, you guys will see that this is sticking to the top right here. There's a lot of really cool use cases that Divi uh, shows you guys how to use this with. So um, you guys got to go check that out. Obviously, there's a thousand different ways on how you guys can make this uh, look really cool. And I actually use this on my current websites. Now, also, we can make this stick to the bottom. So for the scroll effects, I will also stick to the bottom. What that means is, uh, let's say, for example, we visit the website for the very first time. You'll see that we have this little notice here. As the user scrolls, they will continue to see this notice, but when we scroll past the actual uh, area where the module was first placed, it will then stop there. And then if we keep scrolling, it will be gone. All right, so that's an example of the uh, scroll effects features. It's a really cool feature. Um, check out Elegant Themes uh, YouTube channel. They have tons of ways on how to make some really cool effects and animations using the scroll effects. Next is a really cool feature that's been in with Divi for quite some time, and that is the A-B split testing. Let's say, for example, you guys have some text here, right? But you don't know if it's performing well. So you wanna test that text against another text to see which user clicks the button most, right? Let's go ahead and run an A-B split test. For this little module right here, I'm gonna click on these little three dots, and I'm gonna click on split test. They're saying, all right, congratulations, you're running a split test. Next, click something to test this. I'll click on OK, and I want to click on this button here. All right, and I'll click on OK. Now, there's a few things that you can do here. So we first need to duplicate this module. So right here, we're going to click on this little arrow. All right, so now you guys can see that we have this little, uh, these three little bouncing uh, bars. And if we click on that, you'll see that there's a lot of analytics here. And we just made it, so obviously uh, nothing will be here. But it'll show us the bounces, the goal engagement, the reads, and also the clicks. And then it'll also tell us which module is performing better. Now, I like to actually view the A-B split testing in a different format. So I'm going to click on these little, uh, this little purple circle. And then we're going to click on these little uh, wireframe view. All right, so here we have the text, right? And this text is competing against this text. So this text, you can see, uh, it is saying, plan now, live well. However, we can also run another text, and we're gonna change that to something like, act now. And this will be, get a free quote, right? Get a free quote. And then I'll click on check. Now you guys can also run a third one. So you can uh, split test three different phrases and see which text performs the best. Like basically saying, uh, when they see this text, who clicks on the button the most? And you guys can run as many split tests as you want to see how your page is performing. So I'll go ahead and click on save. All right, and then I'll exit the visual builder. And what Divi's gonna do now is that Divi's going to auto rotate this text and the other texts an equal amount to all the visitors to see which text is performing the best. The AB split test is a great option if you guys are into sales and you wanna find out which text or which image or whatever is performing the best and that gets the most clicks. So I randomly visited my website on this other page here, and you can see that uh, Divi is now auto-rotating the text. So for example, this website says, act now, get a free quote. And on another browser, it is plan now, live well. So Divi is, <laughs> they're auto-rotating all of the actual, um, you know, all of the actual uh, text to see which one's performing well. So here I am clicking on it. You know, I am clicking on it a few times. So um, yeah, after a few days or after a few weeks, you guys can end the split test results and see which uh, text performed the best. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my modules here and I'm actually gonna view 
the actual split test because I did click on that button when I was looking at get a free quote. So I'm gonna go to gold engagements and you guys can see that the text two uh, is performing the best right now. So you guys can get analytics to show you which, um, you know, which one's performing the best. And then once you guys are done reading the analytics, you guys can end the split test and pick a winner. And then you guys can say, you know what? I wanna go ahead and I want to pick uh, this one here. This one's the winner. And then Divi will automatically use that text for your websites. So that's how you guys can use the AB split test feature. It's really helpful. And I think everyone should at least give it one try. All right. And the next thing I want to talk about is the actual elements here on the bottom of the page, plus the other Divi templates over here. You have this little question, right? This is actually a Divi helper. And this just essentially gives you help just in case you guys might get stuck. There is also the layer section. This is where you guys can actually see the layers. You can click on this and sort of expand everything. And you guys can also design everything using the layer section uh, of this if you guys choose to do that. If you guys do click on something, it'll actually take you to the exact column and you know show you what to edit. There is also the uh, finder. All right, and the finder elements, this basically just takes you to different parts of the website. It also uh, just shows you things on the website if you're looking for. The helper option essentially does things for you on your website, and it also takes you to other parts of the website. I don't really use it too much, to be honest. Uh, for example, if you wanna view this in like desktop, you would just, you know, show it in desktop. Yeah, it just, you know, it's just like a shortcut builder. It just takes you to different parts of the website. Again, I don't really use it too much. So if you guys do want to use this finder to view different parts of the website or go to different parts, uh, you guys can use this, but I don't really use it. This option right here is essentially going to export the entire layout. So let's say, for example, you guys build your websites and then you guys want to uh, export this onto another website. You guys can export this. And once that's done, it's going to give you guys a JSON file. You guys can go ahead and take this and then you can import it on another Divi websites. So this is the imports and the export feature. The next feature is the, um, like the undo, I guess you want to say the uh, history thing. So let's say, for example, uh, you made a mistake, right? Like, for example, I'll make a big mistake right here, right? I'll make another mistake and then I'll make another mistake. Uh, with this little editor here, you guys can actually go back until like, you know, when the page was loaded or when you edited the text and Divi constantly saves a lot of these uh, states. So you guys can load those at any time to go back to any parts of the website when you guys were editing the websites. It's actually very helpful. I've actually used it quite a bit because during this tutorial, guys, I made a lot of mistakes and I had to use that uh, to go back. Uh, this thing right here, I don't really know. It's just like uh, page settings, but you can use this. I mean, you can do this in the actual page options. If you want to change the title of the page and give it a featured image, you can do that. But I wouldn't recommend it because this is not a post. So uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, trash. You guys can clear your entire website. Should we do that? Let's do it. We clear the entire website. Over here, we actually have the add to library, which you guys are very familiar with. So we can actually uh, add specific parts of the website and modules to the library that we can use later. For example, I'll click on the plus and uh, I think we actually, no, no, no. I'll click on this plus, a lot of new row. And here we actually have the library. So earlier in the video, I did show you guys how it's to, uh, you know, save modules and add them to your library. And that's just an example. Now let's say you guys wanna use uh, some of Divi's amazing pre-made layouts. Let's do that. Right here, I'll click on the load from library and we have tons and tons of different layouts that we can use. So let's say for example, you guys want to just use this agency layouts. You'll click on use this layout and then you guys can use these pre-made layouts. Now the great part about these layouts is that they create everything for you. They create the home page, the about us page, the services page, the contact, and all the pages that uh, correlate to each other. So you can use these on your client's websites and then you can adjust the colors, the fonts, the images, and make it look like, uh, you know, make it fit the criteria uh, for your client's websites. And there we go. So we have this beautiful website, everything imported. And yeah, they have over like 500 templates, guys. So be sure to check out the Divi templates. On the right side, this is obviously the, um, the phone view, the tablet view, and also the desktop view. There is also a zoom out, which allows you to zoom out here. And just it just gives you like a better visual of the website. I do like this a lot because this helps like you understand like how it looks from 
Uh, it just helps you get a better idea for it, right? And there's also the um, the other, I guess you want to say the, the builder view style, which allows you to build or look at this from a, uh, what do they call it here? The wireframe view, all right? So you guys can actually uh, build your website from the actual wireframe view. Uh, when Divi first came out, this was actually the only way to build the website. And you had to build it like this. But uh, Divi 3.0, which came out a few years ago, actually allowed you to build everything from the front end. So it was a very big update, but I have videos on YouTube that actually show you guys how to build the website uh, from this method. So uh, I have been using Divi for quite some time. And uh, yeah, that's that. But uh, yeah, you guys can build it like this if you guys choose to do that. And then once you guys are done, you will click on the uh, computer uh, logo and you can see the changes that you guys made to the websites. So uh, that's pretty much what that option is. And these three dots right here, uh, these are more for uh, the builder settings. And I gotta be honest, guys, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't dislike the video. I'm just so like, I don't know what this is. I've never used it. And I'm sure there's a, a, a case use for it. I just never really uh, got into the nitty gritty here and use all these uh, features. But, I, I, but I'm sure they're very helpful and useful. And I'm sure Elegant Themes has documentation on that section there. Now, before we introduce our guests, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a blog post um, that actually pulled up a lot of the best Divi theme tutorials. Uh, Divi theme actually has created a lot of really nice tutorials, like how to add specific effects and animations. And the thing is, they actually released these uh, just randomly and they just put them on the internet. So what I did here was actually compiled a lot of their best tutorials. Like for example, here, they added this like option on top of the actual uh, menu, which is really cool. And they have a lot of really uh, creative lessons and designs to improve your Divi skills. So here you guys can see that we have these, you know, these text backgrounds and there's just so much to learn. Uh, also, this one's really cool. When you actually scroll down the uh, uh, waves, they move around and stuff like that. So they are really cool and helpful. And then they just have some really creative uh, stuff here, like, um, you know, inline login forms, uh, how it's to create an inline email opt-in, uh, toggle dark mode and light mode, which is interesting, uh, a call to action menu, gradient shape overlays, uh, gradient background animations, a gradient background on hover, uh, changing text and images, an animated clock, which actually animates as you scroll down. It's really, cra it's really, it's crazy. <laughs> it's really incredible. So I'll go ahead and link this uh, blog post for you guys in the description below this video. And this will actually showcase some of the best lessons uh, that come from Elegant Themes. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the Divi Advanced Features. Hopefully this section helped you guys out and understand how to use Divi better. Now that I'm done with this section, I'm gonna give you guys some really cool tips and tricks and show you guys uh, my guests. All right, and our first guest, his name is Nelson Miller. He is the owner of picreative.com where he has tons of uh, Divi products. He offers Divi child themes. He actually has one product here that's pretty popular and it's the responsive helper. This is on the Divi marketplace and it is a trending product. So a lot of people do like it. He also does have courses. Uh, he has a lot of, of tutorials on how to do stuff. So if you ever, you know, you ever get stuck on something or you want to learn on how to do something with Divi, he does have a lot of really cool uh, blog posts and tips and tricks on how to use Divi. But with that said, uh, here he is. Thank you, Daryl. Hello, everyone. It's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Some of you may know me from my Divi tutorials every week and my Divi plugins. So today we're looking at a really powerful, exciting feature in Divi. It's called their conditions feature, uh, conditional logic displays, where we can actually choose to display any section, row, column, module, based on some kind of condition that we can choose and set. You can add one or you can combine conditions. So we're gonna take a look at some of those real quick and show you a quick overview of how powerful and useful the conditions feature is in Divi. First thing I'll do is just show you where these features are located. So again, it could be in any section, row, or module. So I'll just open up the settings and go to the advanced tab. Here you'll see this group of settings, the toggle called conditions. So open that up and then display conditions. You can add a new condition. And again, we can add more than one if we want. 
So let's start with something really simple, easy to understand. Here I have four buttons and you can see it says download on Windows or Mac, App Store or Google Play. So if I'm coming to this website and they're offering their product, there's no point in seeing these buttons if, I don't, if I'm not on these devices. I can't click and download on this if I'm on you know, a Windows computer, that wouldn't make any sense. So let me show you what you could do. So on the download for Windows, I could open here and we'll do this for every single one. Go to the conditions and add condition. Then go down here to operating system. So this was download for Windows, so I'll, ch I'll check Windows. And then again, display only if operating system is, or I could say is not, Windows. Done. Now that button won't need display if they're on Windows. Same thing for all these other ones. So I'll go here, add a condition, choose operating system. Now this is download from Mac, so I'm gonna say Mac OS. Really simple. Now I may have an app, and I want you to link to the App Store. So for this, I would choose any of the ones related to um, iPhone, iPad, and iPod. All right, same thing for Google Play. I'll choose if you are using Android. Okay, so that again, display only if. So these buttons will display only if. Now I'm on a Windows uh, desktop, so let me exit here and I'll show you exactly how this works. Notice that the other three buttons are hidden now and only the button that's relevant to me is showing. So that's a quick example. So here I am on a layout for an ice cream shop. And I scroll down here and let's see, where does it say? Flavor of the month. So let's say I wanna go ahead and schedule my flavor of the month I don't want to have to come in here at midnight every month and change this. So what? here's what I could do. I could create, I could duplicate the section or the row, um, but let's just say I'm using uh, this row. I could go in here and add a condition that this, for this month, this will appear based on date and time. And then I can say display only if current date is after. And let's say I choose the last day of the last month now I'm going to add another condition on this one and say date and time is before, and then I'll actually choose the first day of the next month. And then when I save this, it'll actually give you a summary when you hover over here. Only display if it's after April 30th and before June 1st. So therefore it's showing in May, right? And what I could do, I could actually go through here and duplicate this now I could put the flavor of the month for you know June and then do another one for July and just go in here and change the dates. And these rows will display automatically. Kind of get ahead and schedule yourself out, you know, so you don't have to be stressing about customers coming and say, hey, it says the wrong flavor on your website. So here I am on a product page. Now notice that this product is on sale right now. Well, I just happen to know that the sale actually ends tomorrow because I've set that in the back end of this WooCommerce product. So I would like to have a countdown timer here that will display until the sale is over. So right now I'm editing the theme builder template that's applied to all of my products. So I have to keep that in mind. I'm not just editing this particular product page, I'm actually editing the theme builder template. And I'll explain why that's important because I'm on product A I know that product A is going to not be on sale after tomorrow at midnight. So I'm just gonna go right here and add a countdown timer. And I'm just gonna say something like, you know, sale ends Friday at midnight, right? Okay, and then I'll pick the date, that's tomorrow. Okay, so it's less than 24 hours. What I don't want to happen is when this is not on sale anymore, Someone, I don't want someone coming to this page and saying, well, it says sale ends Friday at midnight, huh? But there's zero, 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 the timer's over. So what I will do, go in here to the module, go to the conditions, and I'm going to set a condition that, let's see, date and time, display only if current date is before, and then I'll actually choose, since I was doing Friday at midnight, I'll choose before Saturday. What will happen now is this module will only display before Friday at midnight, you know, Saturday, you know, 1201. All right, so you won't have to worry about this showing after the sale is over, it'll automatically hide. 
So the other thing that I wanted to point out that I'm working in the theme builder template. So what I need to do, since my other products are not on sale, I need to come in here and add a second condition and say location products and product is, so it's product A. So that's kind of what I was talking about with uh, some of those locations. They, they kind of go together with other conditions, right? So now it's saying only display uh, before Saturday morning and only on product A, all right? And just to show you, there are some other things. I could choose a specific date or a specific day of the week, you know, just on Fridays that this shows. Uh, um, I could choose a specific like first day of the month or last day of the month. So things like that are also available. So here is a cart page layout. So if someone has added a product to the cart, now it looks like there is a product here in the cart, so that's great. What I can do is actually add some kind of like upsell here to maybe something that is a related product that I know is related to that, or just like, like maybe I have a membership and like why not buy that instead of this product? So here's what we're gonna do. We'll add a new row here. And I think I'll just put, I'll just make this very simple. So I have just added a text module and made it look like a coupon here. So what, do we, what we can do here is say something very specific. Notice that they have product A in the cart. Well, I could add this coupon code that appears for product B, because I don't want it to say product A. I want them to also add another product, right? So what we could do is say something like, you know, save 20% off product B using this coupon code. And then I could put a button here that links go view you know, product B, I could go in here now to conditions. And since product A is already in my cart, I want to only show, see so here's cart contents. I want to say, show this coupon code. If the cart has products, or that would be just any products, or I could say if it's empty, or I could say if it has or has not a specific product. So in this case, I want to say, does not have product B because this coupon's for product B. So if, if someone's not already intending to purchase product B, it's like a little way of saying, hey, you don't have this in your cart. Would you like to add this to your cart and purchase this? So that's just one of the many ways you can use conditions with WooCommerce. There's a lot of uh, things to do with WooCommerce. So I hope that gives you a clear overview of just how powerful the conditions feature is in Divi. So I encourage you to explore it and try to find, you know, the things that work for your use case. And there are a lot more, obviously. I actually have a couple tutorials on my blog over at pacreative.com. Uh, maybe Daryl will link to them, I'm not sure, uh, but you're welcome to check those out. So thank you all for having me here in this segment and enjoy the rest of your tutorial with Daryl. He does really great at the, these big, long, how to build websites in Divi tutorials, whereas mine are more focused on specific things, uh, maybe some code snippets and things like that. So there's kind of a nice, happy place for everyone. And I hope you really do enjoy the rest of your video. And our next guest, his name is Victor. He is the owner of DiviMundo.com. He offers a free Divi course here. So if you guys do want to further your knowledge with Divi, he actually has like also like a five hour course. It's pretty long and pretty, um, you know, pretty, it's pretty detailed. So you guys might want to check that out. He also does have resources like free Divi layouts as well. I believe he gives this one away for free right here called the Divi Crib. All right. Yeah. So you guys can actually get this one for free. If you go to his website, you guys can download it for free. And he also has a blog here where he does give tips and tricks on uh, you know, things to do with Divi, like how to change the number of columns on mobile. He actually does have also a mobile template that you guys can download for free. And he just has a lot of other cool, really helpful resources on how to use Divi. So here he is. Thank you, Daryl. And hello, party people. I'm Victor from Divi Mundo. And today I'm going to share my favorite tricks on responsive design in Divi. So just to get everyone on board, Responsive design means that your website adapts to the device and the resolution that your visitors are using. This is crucial for your search engine optimization and of course for your user experience. So is Divi responsive? And the answer is yes. 
But does that mean that your design will look great in all screen sizes automatically? Nah, not really. You have to make an effort. Let's take this juicy layout as an example. So when I activate the DV Visual Builder, I can click this purple icon in the bottom to see my different preview devices. By default, the desktop view is active. And you can see the traditional horizontal menu in the top. And we have this here area with a big, beautiful text. And if I scroll down, we have a two column row with text, a button and an image to the right. And then in the bottom, we have a brag board with six columns of client logos. And if I would like to preview this in tablet, I can just click the tablet icon. And if I would like to preview it in a phone, I can just click the phone icon. And as you can see here, some of the changes are made automatically, like the menu is transformed into a hamburger menu on mobile devices, but the padding and the text sizes is something that we have to take care of ourselves. If I scroll down, I can see that the two column row is now stacked into a one column row with the text and then the button and the image. And we can also see that the text has a line break here in the mobile designs. So we have to fix that. And in the bottom, we have our logos and they are pretty big. And uh, they're also stacked in one column instead of six columns. So before we'll tweak this design, I'll just show you a few more things in the preview mode. You can click this icon to tilt the device and uh, see how it looks in uh, landscape mode. And one thing that I often do is that I click this drop down and instead of using this generic phone view with the width of 414 pixels, I'll choose maybe an iPhone or another popular model to have a more realistic preview. And now I can click this button to make this the default phone view so I don't have to change this each time. Another nice time saver that you can use is keyboard shortcuts. Instead of clicking these different devices, I can uh, use my keyboard and press command or control minus to move to the left to the bigger device. Or I can press command plus or control plus to go to the right to the smaller screen sizes. Before you start to edit your mobile and tablet design, you need to understand the difference between the responsive preview mode and the responsive design settings. A common mistake is that people start to drag here in the mobile view to change, for example, the padding. But if I go back to the desktop preview, you can see that this affected all devices and uh, that's not the result that I wanted. So I'll undo this by Command Z, or Control Z. And the right way to do this is to click the cog wheel, go to the design settings. And in this case, I'll go to spacing. We can see that we have top padding of 150 pixels and a bottom padding of 550 pixels. To change this on tablet, I'll click the responsive icon. And now I can click the device that I want to edit, for example, tablet. And you can see that it has inherited the bigger device, the desktop, 150 pixels in top and 550 pixels in bottom. So I could now change this to maybe 50 pixels top. And in the bottom, we could have maybe 300 pixels. And if I want to tweak the phone settings, I'll have to do the same procedure and you can see that it has inherited tablet settings here, 50 and 300 pixels, but I can override that by saying maybe 30 pixels in top and we can use a hundred pixels in bottom. And if I go back to the bigger devices, you can see that they've kept their settings. And the same principle goes for text size. So I want to change this one in tablet and phone. So I can actually hover this element and click the pencil icon and that will open the settings. And uh, I'll go down to the title text size and I'll click the responsive icon and make sure that the tablet is active. And now I can change this to maybe 80 pixels for tablet, looks better. And for phone, I'll use 30 pixels. And then I can use the same principle to tweak all these different design settings like this subtitle text. 
maybe I can use 18 for phone. I can do the same for this text module. I'll go to this H2 settings and the desktop size is 45 pixels. I'll click the responsive icon, make sure that phone is selected and we can go for maybe 21 pixels in size or maybe 23. I can also do this for line height. I can do it for letter spacing, etc., etc. And now I have this button with a line break. One obvious fix would be to have shorter text, just removing this one, learn more, and it looks better. But maybe I want to have more text. Put that one back. I'll go to the design settings, button, and we have the button text size. I click the responsive icon, phone, and let's scale it down to maybe 16 pixels. Or we can drag this one down until it looks better. Now you shouldn't do this for every single module on your site. You can right click and apply this style to an active preset. Yes. And this means that every button on my entire website will have this styling on phone. Another thing you can do in Divi is to display or hide elements depending on the device the visitor is using. So if I take this image and click the cogwheel, and I'll go to advanced and visibility. I could choose to disable this one on phone and maybe also on tablet. And you can see now that it's grayed out and this will be invisible if you visit this with this with a real phone or a tablet, if you think that this takes unnecessary space. And the last one, we have these logos. I think they are a bit too big, so I can open the image settings here, go to the design sizing, and we can take the max width, click the responsive icon, and I can set this to max width of 150 pixels. And instead of doing this to all the five other logos here, I can just right click the max width and I can extend the max width to all images throughout this row. And I click extend. There we go, looks much better. Okay guys, this last trick is something that I use on all my DV websites to make it look better in smartphones. And that is changing the default row width. So by default, the row, and that's the green box here in DV, uh, they take up 80% of the viewport width. And that's fine for the bigger screens on desktop and, and tablets. But in the tiny smartphone screen, I would like to have more width for my content. So to do that, I click the cogwheel for the row. I'll go to the design settings and I click sizing. And as you can see, the default width is 80% for all devices. So I'll hover width and I'll click the responsive design icon and I'll make sure that phone is selected and I will change this to 90% and have a close look here to see the change, 90. And this way we have more space for our content in these smaller screens. And in the last step, I will save this as a global default. So that means that all my existing rows will be 90% wide in mobile and all my future rows will have this size by default as well. So I'll right click the width and I'll choose apply style to active preset. This will affect all rows using the row default preset across your entire site. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Perfect. And if I would like to override this in one single row somewhere, maybe I want it to be 60% or 100%, I can just go into the row settings, design, sizing, I'll go to mobile, and I could change this to maybe 100% and this will override the default setting. That's all for today. If you want more Divi tutorials, for example, on how to style the mobile menu or how to change the number of columns in mobile or tablet or about 60 other Divi tutorials, you should check out my YouTube channel. Just search for Divimundo or check out divimundo.com and you'll find everything there. Now back to you, Daryl. 
All right, cool. Thanks, Victor. And our next guest, her name is Michelle Snyder. She is the owner of MichelleTheCreator.com. She has a blog here where she talks a lot about Divi, so she gives a lot of Divi tips and tricks. She also has a shop page here where she does sell her own layouts. So if you guys are interested in that, you guys can go check that out. But she's gonna show you a really cool trick with Divi. And here she is. Hello, my name is Michelle Schneider, and I'm gonna show you a quick tip on how to customize your designs in Divi. Now, I absolutely love using Divi to build websites because it makes it so easy. However, sometimes you run into situations where you can't find the right module settings to create exactly what you want. But there's no need to worry. With Divi, you can customize just about anything with the help of CSS. So the example that I'm gonna show you today is how to stack any Divi module side by side within a row. This works really great if you're trying to put two call to action buttons next to each other or even small images. I actually just used this technique on a site that needed to display eight tiny logos next to each other. And instead of going through the trouble of building out eight columns, I used the technique and it worked great. So let me show you how it's done. We're gonna start with an example web page. We're gonna pretend we have a coffee shop and we've got two call to action buttons that we would like on the intro section. And ideally we would like them stacked side by side and in the center of the page. So. As you can see, I've got one button that says order online and one button to view the menus. So how might I do this? Your first initial reaction might be just put them in two columns and adjust the column width so that you could stack them easily side by side. That is a solution. Often, if you've ever done this, you know that you often run into issues when the buttons are different widths. They don't always behave the way that you want them to. And sometimes you think it'd just be easier if you could just put them side by side in one row, but you can't. So let's show you how to do this. So as I'm in my visual builder here, all I have is a single row, one column, and I've got my two modules. So the first thing I'd like to do is click on the row settings. This will bring up our settings box. And now we're actually gonna go into the column settings. So please take note of this. If you're going to make these adjustments on the row settings, it will not work. We're gonna click this gear to get into the column settings. And you can now see up top here, we are in the column settings. Navigate to the advanced tab and custom CSS. In the main element section is where we're gonna to start to add some CSS to modify our modules. So the first thing I'm gonna add is display flex. As you can see, the buttons are now side by side next to each other. There isn't any spacing around them. We will address that in a moment. But the next thing I wanna tackle is to get them centered. So I need to add two more lines of CSS here to make sure that these are going to be center aligned. The first one I'll add is align items center. And you can see what happened here was that now they're kind of out of sync. So one is higher than the other and that's not necessarily what we want, but we will fix that in a minute. The last CSS that we're gonna add here in this section is going to be justify content center. And now you can see that they are now in the center of the page. We've got a few more things to fix before we can call this a success. The next thing we wanna do is travel back to the row settings. Now to address the fact that these are now sort of out of line and they're not displaying at the same height, there is a kind of a weird thing that happens. There's extra padding that is getting added to this button here and it actually has to do with the gutter width. So we just need to change the gutter width to fix this. So in order to do that, we'll go to the design tab in the row settings. We'll go to sizing we'll use a custom gutter width and we'll turn this to one and voila, everything is now fixed. So that is all that we need to do on the row. The next things that we can address will be the spacing for each button. So let's hit save on these row settings and then we will navigate to each individual button. I will click on the design spacing tab for this and then I'm gonna add 10 pixels to every single side of the button. And that will allow for just a little bit of space in between each button, as well as when and if we want these buttons to stack, then they'll have that extra space too. So it is important to add the top and bottom if you are planning on having these buttons stack on top of each other when you're going to the mobile view. We'll save that. Let's do the same thing for this button. We'll click the design tab and then go to spacing, add our 10 pixels and then hit save on this as well. So let's check and see what this looks like when we are 
looking at different devices. So we'll test our tablet view and that's looking pretty good. We'll test our mobile view and not so great. So the one thing that you could do, let's say you really wanted these buttons side by side on a mobile view, it's not impossible. I would probably suggest decreasing the size of the text, which we could easily do. We could go into design, we would go into our button stylings, and then for the text, we would enable our device type, and then for mobile, we might push that down to, let's see what 15 looks like. We'll hit save, do the same thing. For this button, enter our device type, we'll go down to 15, and then we can hit save. One other thing that we could do if we wanted to, to get this a little bit more space is we could go into the width here, and then we could increase the width of the row for mobile devices. So maybe we set 95. That would be a way that you could do it. So one possibility. So I could hit save there. But let's say that maybe we really just wanted these buttons to stack on top of each other. And that's fine. I'm going to go to the history and we will go back a few steps here and we'll hit save there. The only thing we would need to do to modify these to stack on top of one another is to go back into our column settings. Again, not the row settings, the column settings. We would go to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and then we just need to enable the device type here. And for our phone, we could say display block, and that would stack them on top of each other. Another thing that we could do is we could hit save if we wanted these alignments to change. We could go into our button settings, go to the design tab, hit alignment, and for the device type on a phone, we could hit center. So that would be an easy way to make those adjustments. I'll do it one more time for this. We'll hit the device type and then center align that and hit save. So this would be a simple way to stack these buttons. Now, if you'd like to grab the CSS, if you didn't write it down, I do have a landing page that you can go to to copy and paste this text for you to use on your own site. Just visit michellethecreator.com slash stack dash divi dash modules. You can see that address here on the screen and you can go and find all the resources you need to create this for yourself. One last thing I'd like to say about using this technique, when you are using display flex on the column settings, literally anything that you add within the column will be stacked side by side. So it doesn't really matter what module type you are using. So I could even go in and add icons next to each other. I don't know why I would want to do that. But you know, if you do have a situation where you have a mix of things that you would like to put side by side, maybe you have icons and images that you wanted to put next to one another, this technique would work great for that. So you aren't limited to specific module types that you can stack next to each other. It's just going to be anything within the row will appear side by side. So I hope you found this helpful. All right, so that was pretty helpful. And the last guest is Divi Engine. Now these guys focus on Divi extensions and plugins. As you guys can see from their plugin list right here, uh, they have quite a bit, right? They have Divi Body Commerce, uh, Divi Ajax Filter, which is a very uh, highly requested plugin, which I really do like, and other various plugins. You guys can also, you know, meet the team. If you guys want to check them out, you know, you can go ahead and read more about their story. And then also they do have a blog over here where they just give general tips on how to uh, improve your design skills with Divi. Now what Divi Engine is going to do is they're going to show you guys how to create an event registration page, which can be used for pretty much any type of registration you want on your website. So here they are. Folks, Roby here with the Divi Engine team coming at you with a very special tutorial collaboration with Daryl Wilson. Yeah, that Daryl Wilson. He was kind enough to invite us to come talk to you and walk you through a quick event registration page tutorial using the Divi theme. If you don't know Divi Engine yet, you should definitely check us out. We built some awesome plugins specifically for Divi and help you build better Divi websites. Our plugins are geared towards things like WooCommerce for e-commerce sites, custom post types using ACF and so forth, and different types of forms for front-end post creation, menu creation, and so much more. Okay, so for our event 
registration site, we are going to be focusing on a fitness bootcamp as our use case here. You'll see that we've got a bunch of different elements on the page here, and we're going to show you how to utilize all the features you'll find in Divi to achieve this layout. Why don't we start off by dropping in all the modules that go on this page? So we're going to start with our two column row. And then we're going to start adding text modules. So we said that there were a few text modules here. So I'll put one in there. I know that there'll be one more. And then right below here, I'm just going to put in a burp module. We're not going to get too fancy here just yet, but we'll style these up in a moment. And the next is the contact form. And then lastly, in the second column, we've got an image. So we'll just go ahead and add that. Here in the section, we're going to go to background. And we're going to tell it that we want to have a gradient background. So we just click over here. And then we're going to add two colors to our gradient. The first one is going to be this red color. And again, all colors will be in the description of this video. There's our red. And then our stop will be black. That is perfect. And now next up, we want to use those new Divi features. We're going to add a pattern here. And then as for which pattern, we're going to use this pattern called pulls. And we just want to rotate it so that it creates this like speedy effect. And then we go to background mask, which is also that new feature with tons of options in here. We're going to select the chevron. And then what we want to do is we do want to change that color there to that blue color that we've got set. Let me just go ahead and we go put that in there. And now we want to flip these over. So we just go to inverse by clicking this button right here. And there we have most of our section ready. We just need to do one more thing here on design. We need to go to sizing. And we want to make sure that it takes up the full height of the browser. So we just say 100 VH for the minimum height. And then that's it for our section. We're good to go. OK, so next up, we're going to tackle these row settings. So we're going to open that up. And for these, we don't need to do that much similar to the section. We're just going to go over at first to the design tab here. And then we just, we'll just adjust some of the sizing settings. We're going to set the columns to equal height. We're going to set the width to 90%. And then we'll drag the max width over all the way. And you'll see how that expands the content. And then lastly, similar to the section, we're going to set the minimum height to 100 vertical height. And that is really all we need to do here. We're going to hop back over to the content tab. And we're going to add a quick line of code to each column, which will center that content in their columns. So we're just going to say align dash self colon center semicolon. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'm lazy. Go up to the second column, advanced tab, custom CSS main element, and paste that in. You see how that aligns right in the center there. So that looks great. We'll start by styling this first text module here. So let's go into the settings. And make sure that you're in text view. Now I'm going to paste a block of text here that I have. And I've got an H4 at the top, which is the time. I've got the H2, which is going to be the title. And then the rest of the text is in a P tag. And you'll see why right now when I go over to the design settings. Now here in the design tab, we want to go to text first. And I'll drag this over to the right a bit so we can see better. And we're going to change the font for just the normal text. So the text that's at the bottom here, we want that to be cabin. So I'm going to type in C-A-P-N. And then what I'm going to do is change that color to white. And we're going to adjust that text size to 28. Makes it nice and big. We'll add one pixel of letter spacing, makes it easy to read. These are the details of our event. And we'll make the line height 1.2 EM. I think gives it a good amount of breathing room here. And I think that looks pretty good. And what's one more thing we want to do is just add some text shadow here. Just helps it kind of bounce off from the background there a little bit. Let's go to our heading text. Now, as you remember, we added two headings. We had a H2, which is the first one we'll deal with. We're going to work with the Roboto condensed font for our headings. You see that update real quick. We're going to use this as a bold font. And then we're going to set our text color to white again. And this time we'll make the font size 48. 
nice and big, nice and visible. And last up, we're gonna do the H4. Same thing, we're gonna make this Roboto condensed. This time we'll use the light variation though. And what we'll do here is we're gonna do this to uppercase and make the color white and we'll bump this font down two pixels. Okay, and hopping over to our second text module here, we're gonna add that hosted by portion. So I again have some text copied here and all it says is the H4 tag that says hosted by. So for this, all we need to go is to do design. We're gonna add a text shadow again just by going to the text tab here. Select the same option. I'm selecting option one here. You can select option two, depending on what you want. Well, let's leave it on two. Maybe two is better. And we'll go to design heading, heading four, because we used the H4 there. And we just need to tell it once again, we want to use Roboto condensed. We're going to make it two uppercase, set that color to white, and then we'll bump this down a couple notches. And then that's good. That's our text module all done. So let's quickly rush into that burp module. Blurb module, we're gonna go put a title and we are dealing with Bobby muscles, but you know, whatever you wanna do, I am going to just put your fitness trainer as this is kind of his title. And you'll see that update down there. And for the image, we'll just come here to image and icon. I select image and I have Bobby's picture right here. I'm gonna upload that. Oh, that, that's beautiful, man. And now we go to the design tab to just quickly figure out the details here. Image and icon first. We're not using an icon, but we're gonna put that image to the left and we'll give it a size of 75 pixels. You'll see that bumps up a bit. And then also we'll give it around the corners of 50 pixels. And that gives us that nice round uh, display here. Now for the title text, we will come down all the way, title text. And what we need to do here is, again, you guessed it, we're gonna use that Roboto condensed. We're gonna set it to bold and we'll make sure that it's white. And then we've got Bobby Muscles, personal trainer. Okay, so next is the body text. And here we will just tell it to use that cabin font again. And we need to tell it to make that text color white. And then lastly, we're gonna deal here with the sizing options. And we're just gonna tell it here to make the content width all the way to the right. So it scoots it up to the left here. Now we do need to add a little bit of code here in the advanced tab. So I'm just gonna to go to advanced, custom CSS, and I'm gonna go down to the blurb title. And it's just to center this text here. So I'll paste this in and it centers that text nicely next to the image. Okay, so getting to our image here, we're just gonna click on the settings. I'm going to select our runner image, pops in right there. And next up, we'll give it this white glow behind it just by adding a gradient background. I'm gonna click plus, and our first color is white with a 40% opacity. Oops, there we go. And our second color on the gradient is, just make sure that's at 55% stop right here. And it's just transparent. Now, what we wanna do here is just make sure that this is a circular. And there you go, that's all set. Now, next up, we just wanna make sure to add a quick line of code that's gonna add a nice little shadow effect to it. So kind of pops up a little bit more. So we go to advanced, custom CSS, and on the main element, we'll use the folder drop shadow functionality. And there you can see it's got a nice little shadow there to just make the runner stand out from the page more. Okay, so let's hop into the contact form settings and we're gonna set up the form first and then we'll add all the fields that we need that aren't in here already. So let's start by just creating a form title down here in text. We'll say join the fun. And we will just put a custom success message in here. When you go down here and I will just paste this, it says, great, we'll see you on Monday. And then next up, I'll just change the submit button text to say register for bootcamp. And that looks 
pretty decent. Now, next is just a couple points of discussion. Here on the email, you want to say who, the, who will be receiving the email when somebody registers. And then you can change the message pattern. If you click on the question mark here, you can use those field IDs that we'll be looking at here in a second to kind of compose your own layout there. And you know, there's other stuff for redirects and spam protection. We'll just use the standard math equation, but that gives you an idea of how to do this. Now, next up, we want to give it a background and we'll just use black, but then what we'll do is we'll kind of bring that into about a 20% opacity. Oh, oh, there we go. And that is kind of the content section and we'll get to the rest of the fields in a second. So going to the design tab, we want to change the field background color and we're going to keep it on white. But what we'll do is we'll give it a 50% opacity. That looks decent. And then the fields text color will get the same treatment. It's going to be white, but also with a 50% opacity. And of course that 50% on the 50% gives it that darker color. Now our field focus text color will be white. And then we'll just kind of work on that text for that. We're going to set the font to cabin and we will increase the text size to about 18. And we'll add some letter spacing in there of one pixel just to make it nice and legible. And the next up, we are going to go to the title text. And on the title, we're going to use our title font, which is going to be our Roboto condensed on the bold level. And we'll just make that nice and white. And that's pretty decent. And now we can just also go ahead and set the captured text. And of course, there's tons of stuff you can do. I'm just going to set that to white. I'm going to set the font to cabin. And I'm just going to increase that a bit to about 18. That looks decent. Good to go. Now, lastly, we want to set up, well, not lastly, but almost lastly, we're going to set up the button custom style so it looks better than this. We're going to say yes to custom styles. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be reusing that red color. But first, we want to say that the text color is white. And we're going to set the background color to that red. There we go. And now border width is going to be zero. Border radius will be zero. And our button font is going to be Roboto Condensed again. And we want to change the icon. And I'm just going to type in Jim here. You get a nice dumbbell there. And now when you hover, dumbbell comes up. Perfect. And then lastly, we're just going to get to spacing here. And we're going to give it 25 pixels of padding all around the house. There we go. And we just click here on the content tab and we'll be reusing some of the stuff that's already in here. So first we want the first name. So we're gonna type in first name and then to be lazy, I will just copy that and paste that right in there. And that is our first one done. And then I'm just gonna copy this one since the second one is last name. So I'll just go, oh, did that two times. I will just go in here, just replace first with last and then go here LA and then that is that all done. We want to do this a little differently. We want the email to be full width. So we go into the settings here, we go to design layout and then make it full width. And then we go back to content and we can just save that one. We'll delete the message because we don't need that one, but we're going to add one for age in here. So we're going to type in age. Title is going to be age. And then in the field options, it is an input, but we want to tell it that we only want to allow numbers. So there's that one. Actually, what we want to do also on this one, going back into age, go to design layout and not make it full width because we'll be adding another field here. So lastly, let's add fitness level as an option. Um, and then what we're going to do is type that, well, copy that because I'm lazy, paste that. And then we go to the field options. And now instead of the regular input type, we're going to select the select dropdown. And now we get to add some options. Now I have some pre-made ones right here that I'm going to copy and paste in. So there's one there and you can put any type of options you want in here. 
there we go and then protein is life also tell them that this one is not going to be full width and save that and save that and there we have it here we are here we've got our page ready to go so that was pretty easy to do guys so you can make these type of pages for any type of site that you're doing um, that requires people to register for an event or a class or something like that it's just super useful Alrighty, so here we've got a Divi form builder form that is pretty much the same, but here you can just see some distinct differences that just give it a little bit of extra touch, which is where we can add some custom placeholders. We could put our labels at the top here. Um, for our drop down, we can have some placeholder text even in there. And other features like adding, you know, saving submissions to the database. And if we just quickly use the form here, and uh, show you something else that's really cool. You can actually create your own submission success layout. So if I save this, we can give the user additional information. So now we're reminding them, get a sweat towel, drink water, good attitude, see you Monday. So that's just a, you know some small but awesome things that can take that Divi form a little bit further. So anyway, guys, this has been Roby with the Divi Engine team. So stoked to be here with Daryl Wilson and working with him to bring you guys some awesome content on utilizing Divi to build some amazing things. Thank you for watching and definitely check out our site and our products over at DiviAngel.com. But again, thanks to Daryl, thanks to the team. I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed our guest appearances. If you guys have any questions for them, feel free to let them know in the comments below. And with that said, let's go ahead and go on to the next section. Hey guys, in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Divi Theme Builder. Now the Divi Theme Builder allows you to basically make any part of the website using the Divi Builder. So for example, you guys can make a custom header and a custom footer using the Divi Builder instead of using the theme. You guys can also create like a custom 404 page, a uh, lot of different pages you guys can make. So I'll go ahead and jump into uh, the Theme Builder and we'll go ahead and explore these options in this part of the video. All right, party people, welcome to the Divi Theme Builder section of this video. In this part of the video, I'll be explaining what the Divi Theme Builder is and how to use it. Uh, with the Divi Theme Builder, you guys can enable custom headers, custom footers, custom 404 pages using the actual Divi Builder. For example, we have this menu here at the top and this is all controlled by the theme customizer. However, you guys can also build your own menu with the actual Divi theme elements and I'll walk you guys through on how to do that. So let's go ahead and go to our dashboard here. We'll go down to Divi and click on Theme Builder. So this is the Divi Theme Builder options. Here you can see that we can have a global header, a global body, and also a global footer. We can also click on New Template here and we can create specific templates for specific parts of the websites. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do another example here in just a bit. But what I first wanna do is I wanna walk you guys through on how to create a global header. Now you guys saw previously that we are using the default menu with the theme customizer. So I wanna use the theme builder here. So I'm gonna first click on uh, build a global header and click on build global header. And now you'll see that the Divi builder is loading here. All right, so right now we're brought to the screen where we can now use the Divi builder. So what I wanna do here is I wanna build out a custom uh, header that we can design using the Divi builder. So right here, I'll click on the plus and then go to, uh, we're gonna go to this one here, right? Where it has this large menu and also this really small section. Uh, I'm doing this because I wanna have the menu here with enough space to work with and then also have the button here because the button doesn't really need a lot of space, right? So right here, I will click on menu. Click on check. Now you guys can see that our menu has self-propagated here. And then also over here, I'm gonna add from library and I wanna add in the button that we've been using uh, throughout the entire website, right? And this can lead to like your contact form uh, by clicking on the gear icon for the link. This would be like, you know, your, you know, your website.com slash contact us or something. You know, it would just be the link of a, you know, whatever page you wanted users to go to, right? So um, now that we've done that, I wanna reduce this padding because now you can see this menu is too big, right? It's, it's a lot of white space and I wanna get rid of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this padding. I'm gonna get rid of all that. And then also for this section here, I also wanna get rid of the padding. So spacing, zero and zero, right? 
or maybe like, I don't know. Let's do like two pixels and two pixels or something like that. Okay. So there we go. We got the menu there. Uh, one thing though is I think this button's a little bit too close to the top of the page. So let's say for example, you wanted to control only one part of the actual column. Here for row settings for column two, I wanna go to design, go to the spacing, and I wanna add a little bit more just for that one right there, just for that row. You know, I want the button just to be just a little bit more center, right? Makes sense. Now we need to add in a logo, right? So let's do that. Here under the actual uh, element here, I'll click on the gear icon for logo. We will then add in our logo, right? So let's go ahead and add in our logo here. And there it is. It's really big, but not to worry. We can go ahead and change the size of that by going to uh, design logo. We'll then go ahead and scroll down here. Just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. And then, oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be sizing. And here I'll go ahead and adjust the logo width, right? There we go, 20, 22, that looks good. I mean, what do you guys think? That looks pretty good to me, right? So I'll go ahead and give it the check mark. Now I wanna add in a background color to this. Now there's a few options here. What I can do is I can actually make this menu transparent so it'll absorb this background or I can manually add in the color myself. It really doesn't matter. I'm first just gonna go ahead and save this really quick. All right, so we're gonna save it. I will then close this and then I'll click on save changes. I'll go back to our website and now I will refresh the page. Okay, and there you go. So we have our menu here. And if we go to the services, you guys can see uh, it goes to all the pages. All right, pretty cool, looks good. All right, so from here, we have a few options. You guys can either decide, you know what, I wanna add a background or I wanna leave it like this or you know whatever you wanna do. But for tutorial purposes, I'm gonna add in a background color here. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to re-enable the builder and I wanna add a background here. Now there's a trick to this because remember, these modules also have a background color as well. So we need to go ahead and make sure that the background color is applied to this section this section and also the module itself. Let me give you an example. Here for the actual backgrounds, I'll go ahead and add a background color here and I'll add in the first background color. You guys can see how it's only applied to bits and parts of the menu, right? We now need to add it to the middle part right here. All right, backgrounds, background color, paste it there and then check mark it. Now the last part that we need to do is we actually need to add it to this little uh, element. This actual element actually has a background color, <laughs> believe it or not. Here, click on the gear icon, go to background, and here it's using this white background by default. I can actually just delete that, and now you see that it has a transparent background, and the column section is adding the color. So here, I'll click on check, and now I'll go ahead and save this. Okay, and we can go back to our website here and refresh the page. And voila, so now you guys can see how it just blends really well uh, with the actual menu. So uh, that is an example of how you guys can create a custom header. Now I've already created a custom header for you guys that's fully optimized. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? Uh, this is good and all, but uh, you're getting the treatment. You know, you're getting deleted. And I wanna go ahead and import the templates that I actually uh, gave you guys. So right here is the arise. And here we have the actual header. I'll open this and I will import the Divi Builder. All right, cool. So you guys can see it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, I just need to maybe adjust the actual font here. I think Joss is a really good one, right? Let's go ahead and change this to, uh, was it Joss? Let's see where we can find it here. Menu text. Ooh, red hat text. Ugly, ugly, yeah, ugly. Here, Joss and check. And then I'll click on save. All right, cool. So that's how we can add a, a global header over here to our uh, websites. Now let's go ahead and add in a hey, global footer. Listen. Right here, I'll do the same thing. Add a global footer and click on build a global footer. All right, and what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna load the template here and I'm actually gonna explain to you how all this works because this can be a little complicated, especially for beginners. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, click on the imports, and then we're going to import the actual footer layout and I'll explain to you guys exactly how this works. So here I will click on import Divi Builder layout. 
Okay, so this is our current footer, right? And this is a really nice footer, except I want to explain to you guys how this actually works, right? So here we actually have elements, right? We have a, a text setting, right? And this right here is also text. Okay, so these are just text modules. Below that, we have this little uh, an email button. We have this other text. We have some more text. We actually added, I think there's an image here or a logo. I'm not sure which one it is. It could be both. Yeah, just an image. And then we have this other text right here at the bottom. Now, these are not actual links, right? These are just random text. So we need to actually make these link to specific parts of our website. So for example, our services, right? I'm going to change this to pages. Okay. And uh, right here, I'm going to go ahead and take this, take this text. And this is going to be our home page. Oops, oops, whoopsies. And next, we're going to take this. And this is going to be our services page. This is going to be our about us. About us. And lastly, this is going to be our contact us page. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Okay, we don't need these because these are actually not really part of our websites. Now we have these four uh, texts, but these are not links, right? You can see that they're not links and they're not really uh, linking us anywhere. We need to actually link these to our specific pages. So going back over here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to our uh, home page here. And we're going to copy this link. We're then going to go back to our home. We'll double click and here I will insert the link. I don't know why it's down there. That's weird. <laughs> and then I'll press enter. And for the actual services, we can do the same thing here, but I'm going to go ahead and just open this up really quick just to give you guys a better visual. So here we have the actual services page, right? And I'm actually going to go ahead and also click on the link and the URL. We're going to go here. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Whoops. Here we go. Uh, copy the services page, and then we're going to paste it in there like that. Now, I do have an option here. I can actually choose to open this in a new tab if I want to, but um, I don't think that's a good idea. That, that would be kind of annoying, right? That means if they click on the services button right here, it'll force their browser to open a new tab. But I'm just going to leave it as uh, services. Next, we have the about us. Same thing here. I will link the about us here. All right, and then lastly, we have the contact us where uh, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that right there like this. And then I'll click on check. Now, you guys can also add in any other elements that you guys want. For example, over here, I will say, you know what? Maybe I want to add in the uh, the button right there. You know, maybe this can be like a free ebook button or something. Who knows? You know, but you can add in other modules here and you guys can actually build your entire footer from scratch using the actual Divi Builder. Now, there's a lot of different ways on how to get customizable with this. But for total purposes, I'm just going to leave it there because I think that's enough. And I think you guys have a good understanding of what this does. All right, so now that I've actually created this footer, I'm now going to go over here and click on save. All right, and now we'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page. All right, and now you guys can see that we have this beautiful footer here at the bottom. And if users click on these little links right here, uh, it'll take them to the about us page. And if I scroll down here, you'll also see that this footer still is on every single page because we set it to be a global, right? So if we keep scrolling, uh, there it is. And then the contact us. And there it is. So yeah, that's how you guys can enable a custom header and footer on your WordPress website using the Divi Builder. Now, let's say, for example, you guys also wanted to add another page here. Uh, let's say, for example, if someone enters the wrong address, right? Someone enters something wrong. And then they're brought to this page right here, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? It doesn't look good. It's not part of your website. You know, it's part of the theme. And it just, it doesn't make any sense, right? Hey, Let's go ahead and add in a 404 over here. So I'll click on add a new template. And then I'll go ahead and go to 404 page and click on create a template. Now with the 404, you can see that we still have the global header and the footer applied, but I also want to add in a custom body right here. So I'll click on add a custom body and then I'll click on build custom body. All right, now for tutorial purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just use a template here. So I'm gonna click on these little three little dots. And just for tutorial purposes, I'll go ahead and just uh, grab this one here. All right, I think this one will work. Yeah, this one will work. 
and I will use this layout. I know what you guys are thinking. Daryl, this looks this looks like really big. This is a whole website. Don't worry, guys. We'll go ahead and just use specific elements to uh, achieve what we're trying to accomplish. All right, so I loaded up this page. Now, I first need to go ahead and delete all these other sections, right? So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and delete all these sections here just because I don't need them, right? I just want to actually use the actual landing page. And there we go, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna delete this. I don't want this either. And I'm just gonna change this to like 404, right? Like, are you lost? Go back home. And I'm gonna quickly go ahead and make this a one column row, right? And then I will center align this to the middle, right? Makes sense. We're going to center align this. You guys can see my magic here, right? You guys can do this for pretty much everything, right? Like it's really simple. So uh, I'm pro at this, you guys can tell, huh? There we go. I don't wanna use this button, right? I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna add in mine from the actual button library here. I'm also going to make sure that this is center align. And for the background here, I'll just go ahead and change this background. I'll get rid of this, uh, this one and I'll add in my own background color. And then for the actual background color, I'll just use the same color that we've been using over here for a while right here. So the background, it looks like somewhere else is actually using, oh, right here, there we go. And then we would probably just have to change this to like black, right? Because uh, this this text is too white, right? So I'll just go ahead and oop, we need to do the other color, the heading text. Sorry, the heading text. Make this black, right? And then also just make this black as well. This is a paragraph text, and there you go. Uh, but we got to change this to Jost, right? To Jost because uh, this is uh, no, it's the header heading text. My bad, heading text. Default. You guys can tell I'm not on a script, right? I just I just know what I'm doing here, and this will just be like uh, you know go back home, go back home, check, and then save. All right, and once that's done, I will close this and I will click on save changes. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to our websites and we're going to enter in the wrong address here. We'll press enter and there you go. So it's telling us to go back home. Now we probably need to link this button over here uh, to our actual, like, you know, our homepage, right? So going back here, you would just enter like the name of your actual domain, right? Which is this right? So if they actually click on the actual button right here, um, it'll take them actually back to the home page. So that makes sense, right? So for the link, you just want to make sure that you paste the link for your original home page. And then that should work, right? So I'll just uh, refresh this page here. And now if I click on this, this will take me right back to the home page. And there it is. All right, so that is pretty much the theme builder summed up. Now there is a lot more to do with the theme builder. I'll be very honest, guys, I am barely scratching the surface with the theme builder. However, the global header, the global footer, and the 404 page is pretty much the most common thing. All right, so now let's talk about, maybe you guys wanna add in a custom header for specific pages, because maybe you don't wanna have the same exact header for all of your pages. This is very common. A lot of users tend to use a special header for their homepage. And then for like the services and the about us, it's a little bit more basic, right? So right here under the add a new templates, I'm gonna click on specific pages, but I only wanna select like the services, the contact and the about us. And then I'll click on create a template. Now I'm gonna delete this, this one where it says global. And now I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? I wanna add in a specific custom header for those specific pages. So now I'll click on add a custom header. And instead of using the global header, I wanna click on build a custom header. What I'm essentially saying here is I wanna actually use a different style header for those specific pages. And just to speed this up, I'm gonna go ahead and import my template one more time here. And now let's say, for example, for these, um, for this menu, I don't want to have like a background, right? So for the background, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to delete the background, right? And maybe I don't, I don't want to have the button too, you know, whatever. <laughs> so the button, we got rid of the button, right? So this is our default header now for those pages. So now I'll click on save. All right. And then I'll close this and then we'll save the changes. So right now, if you guys can read this, we have a default, a template, we have a default uh, 404 page, but then we have a specific custom header and footer for the about us and two more pages. So let's test it. Here, I'll refresh the page. And now if I click on services, we should get a different uh, menu here. And there it is. So now we have this different menu. So it's a white, uh, it's a white menu and the button's also gone. 
So now let's click on the About Us. The About Us, the same thing. You guys will see that we still have the original menu. So this is how you guys can have a custom header uh, on other various pages. Now, again, uh, I am just scratching the surface here with the theme builder. There is a lot more you can do. Uh, you can also do this for posts where you can have specific post templates. You can also design all of your archive pages because remember, uh, if users actually click on the actual author page for a blog, they're gonna get that default look, right? So just to give you a quick little example over here, uh, if I go to a blog post, let's see, there we go, a blog post and I click on Jorius Miller, so these are all the blog posts that are created by Jorius Miller. So over here, uh, we can actually uh, create a specific author page for Jorius Miller, and then you can design it using the Divi Theme Builder. And you can do this for everything. So the Divi Theme Builder is extremely robust. There's a lot you can do with it. And uh, yeah, just spend the time to mess around with it and get comfortable, and yeah, that'll work from there. So I'll go ahead and click on All Changes Saved. Now, one last thing I wanna show you all, let's say for example, you guys did all this work and you want to export this, right? So this is the Divi theme builder, right? Builder, right? And uh, we can export all of this, right? It'll take a few minutes, but you can export all the work from the actual theme builder and then apply it to other websites. You'll see here how uh, it has exported. Now, just to show you guys this works, I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything. We're gonna. We're gonna delete everything. Here we go, here we go. Delete, 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 delete. Or actually, I can just do this here. I can click on the uh, the trash cans here at the top, right? And then I'll click on Save Changes. So now if I go to my website, it's gonna be completely stock, right? It's a stock, everything's stock, right? But let's go ahead now and uh, reload those settings there, right, for the DB Theme Builder, and everything should be just fine. So I'll go ahead and go over here, and now I'm gonna import that. All right, the Divi Theme Builder. And now I'm going to import the Divi Theme Builder templates. And there you go. So everything is saved. All I gotta do is click on Save Changes. Now let's go ahead and click on Visit Sites. And perfect, everything is loaded, everything looks great. If you go to the bottom of the page, you'll also see that our custom footer that we made is back there. So guys, that is the Divi Theme Builder section summed up. Hopefully the section helped you guys out. Um, I will have more templates and layouts for you guys for headers and footers and uh, a lot of other really cool stuff. So I really do hope you guys enjoy it. So make sure to give me a big thumbs up party people and let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right guys, welcome to step five. Now in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Divi Marketplace where you guys can spend more money, yeah. Uh, but no, serious though. Um, I'll show you guys how to use the Divi uh, plugins uh, I'll show you guys how to use the Divi templates and also show you guys how to use the Divi child themes. You're gonna come across that term a lot, Divi child themes. Essentially, it's just a theme that's modified with CSS and code to give it a different look and feel than the traditional uh, Divi theme. So let's go ahead and walk you guys through how to spend your money at the Divi marketplace. Let's go. All right, party people, welcome to the last section of this video. In this part of the video, I'll be explaining the Divi marketplace. Now the Divi Marketplace is essentially uh, add-ons, layouts, and child themes that you can add to your Divi website. For example, we'll go ahead and scroll down here and I'm first going to uncheck layouts and child themes. Now the Divi extensions are plugins. So these are plugins that give your website more functionality. For example, this one here is a plugin that gives you 50 new premium modules. Oh, that's weird, there's a typo. It, it says 50 on their image, but on their description, it says 40. So uh, yeah, also the Divi gear, this allows you to showcase your blogs in a, a nicer format. There's also the Divi table maker, which allows you to create like affiliate marketing tables. Um, and there are tons of other uh, stuff that you guys can add to your uh, Divi website. Now there's also layouts. So I'm gonna uncheck the extensions and click on layouts. Layouts are just templates, right? So for example, let's say you guys uh, have a hard time creating headers, which I know a lot of people do, you guys can purchase the Divi header pack. And this is essentially headers that you guys can use on your websites. Uh, they have screenshots and also live demos that you guys can check out. So they do have tons of actual uh, Divi headers that you guys can go through and check out. And these are all responsive, you know, so they do a lot of work. Um, a lot of this is grunt work, to be honest, like, you know, making sure it's responsive and stuff. So uh, purchasing a layout is really not a bad option. They also do have just normal template packs like um, hero sections for Divi, which is like landing page sections, uh, slider modules. 
Um, basically, a bunch of designers got together and they just created some really nice um, styles and stuff that you guys can add on your website. So that's Divi Layouts. Divi Child Themes. Divi Child Themes are essentially modified versions of Divi with code. So uh, normally with Divi, uh, you can't achieve a lot of the uh, sections or styles you can with these specific uh, child themes. Uh, for example, Divi e-commerce is a, I guess it's a popular one. I'm not sure about their design though. Their design is, eh, it's so-so, but you know, who knows? So I'll go ahead and scroll down. And usually with Divi, um, this is not the default way of showcasing products. So the developer actually implemented some custom code that allows you to display your products in a different manner. Also on the right side, you can see we have this buy now and documentation. Uh, this is also part of the Divi child theme. So essentially it's Divi, but it's just a little bit of custom code to give it a different style and sort of a different look than the usual Divi uh, way of doing things. So this is also the products and it looks a little different. We also have this little uh, shopping bag. I'll be having another Divi e-commerce tutorial coming up in just a few weeks as a follow-up to this video. But again, child themes, they are just essentially um, a smaller, a different version of Divi with just custom code. Now you guys will need to have Divi with the actual child theme for them both to work. And I'll walk you guys through on how to uh, add extensions and child themes and all that in this part of the video. So I'm gonna go over here to my account here. You guys can just, you know, chill out and just watch me, just chillax. I'm gonna go to the marketplace. The marketplace is where I have, um, you know, purchased all my products. So I have purchased a uh, template and I have purchased uh, another template and this is a child theme. So first I'm going to go ahead and download the Divi Supreme Pro and I'll add this to my website. So I'll go back over here to dashboard, go to plugins, add new, upload plugin. I'll choose the file and then I'll go to the download section and then I will download the actual plugin. It is called the Supreme, right? Supreme. There we go. I'll open this and I will install this. All right, then I'll activate the plugin. All right, so now that I installed that plugin, I'll then click on Enable Visual Builder. I'll go ahead and scroll down and I'll open up a new section here. And I'll just make this a little bigger just so we can have a little bit more space. And I'll click on the plus one column. And if I scroll down here, you're going to see that now we have more modules. So we have gradient text, we have a Supreme block reveal, we have a bunch of different other really cool buttons and stuff like that. I'll just use this one right now, the Supreme animated or the gradient text. So it looks like uh, this is an example animated gradient text settings. Looks like here we can actually, uh, you know, have this animated, you know, to be honest, guys, I don't really know all these plugins and stuff like that by default, but it looks like here you can create uh, animated text that looks really nice. And uh, yeah, you guys can go through these options and settings and then create like uh, animated text. You guys can actually see it's editing or I'm sorry, it's animating right there. So it's this pink color. And then it goes to like this brown color. You see that? Now it's a green color. So that's really, really cool. So that's how you guys can implement these add-ons for your websites. Again, I don't really know all these um, by like the back of my hand. You're just gonna have to go purchase them and try them out with trial and error, guys. So uh, yeah, that's that. Now also we have the other ones, right? Uh, here we have, uh, I think this is a layout here, right? A Divi Business Pro, this is a pretty cool one. But uh, let's just say, for example, I want to use this one, right? We have the growing Divi layout library. I'll go ahead and download this. I will then open this product. So remember, this is a layout, okay? So this is not a uh, this is not an actual plugin. This is a uh, these should have JSON files. So layouts, uh, Divi section layouts, and they have a few right here. I'll just grab uh, the about. And here are all the layouts. Now these are JSON files. So you'll just go ahead and drag and drop these onto your website and they should propagate. So let's go back over here to our website. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna make this a little bigger cause I wanna get out of tablet mode. There we go. And uh, I'll just go ahead and drag and drop this. And I want to replace the existing contents and I'll import this layout. And there it is. So there is the layout that I have uh, purchased. And if I want to add in more, I can simply, you know, do the same thing here. Uh, just drag and drop. I'll import it as well. And I'll scroll down and there is the second one. 
and they have tons of them. So this has like 220 sections. So you guys can go ahead and purchase one of those little template kits and that's how you can import them to your website. And lastly, we have the child themes. Hey, so let's say you guys find a child theme that you guys really like that fits the style and just something that you really do like. Uh, here, I'll click on download and this is the grow multi-purpose DV child theme. So just some random child theme. Right, I'll go ahead and go to our website. Now to use these, you'll just go over here to appearance and go to themes. And then you'll click on add new. Now remember, Divi must be installed on your website. Okay, so uh, I know we're uploading a new theme, but you must have Divi installed because uh, it's going to use pretty much everything from Divi to uh, use this child theme. So I'll choose the file. And then here is the Grow Pro zip. So it is a zip folder. You'll open it and then you'll install this theme. All right, so right here it's telling us that uh, the parent Divi must be installed, right? So it requires a parent theme. This is a child theme. It has detected Divi, so it has installed successfully. Now let's click on activate. All right, so I went ahead and I installed the child theme. Now this child theme has some instructions, okay? So I actually went through and researched this. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the Divi theme options and we're going to import the options in the Divi theme options. And we're gonna import the Grow Pro theme options. Now, other child themes might have this requirements. Uh, here are the actual files that you guys will need to import. So let me just show you guys how to do this once. So if other child themes tell you guys how to do this, uh, you guys will be experts. So we're gonna go over here to the uh, theme options, right? So the Divi theme options. And we're first going to import it is the grow pro theme options so over here you'll see this import we're going to import choose the file and we're going to import the first one which is the uh divi theme options right theme options open and then we'll import that all right we got the green check mark cool let's go ahead and uh do the next one i'll save the changes the next thing we're going to do is go to the theme builder and we're going to import the grow pro template json all right let's do it theme builder import all right now we're going to import the theme builder templates i think it's this one here right yeah theme builder is that builder wait 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 pro builder layouts i think that's it no i think this is it right here yeah this is it i'm gonna go ahead and select this one theme builder Yep, theme builder, and then we're going to uh, import. All right, so it saved these settings. I'm gonna go ahead and save the changes. The next one is the theme customizer. All right, let's go to the theme customizer and I'll show you guys how to do this. All right, so we're gonna go to the theme customizer. We can already see the logos popping up. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and now import the Grow Pro customizer settings. So up here, import, choose the file. And this is the customizer settings. I'll import these as well. All right, and the last thing we're gonna do is we're now going to import the last section to the Divi library. So let's go to the Divi, Divi library. We'll click on the import and export. We'll import, choose the file, and this will be the Pro Builder layouts. I'll open that and I will import the Divi Builder layouts. All right, cool. So I think at now we're ready to go here. So I'm gonna go to visit sites. We're going to add a new page. And this will be like the home page. I'll publish this, I'll publish this. I'll use the Divi Builder. And now I'm gonna click on add from library. All right, and once that's done, we're going to go over here and we're gonna click on this little plus icon and go to your saved layouts. Now you guys will see that we have the homegrown page. I'll just click on this and use this layout. And that's it, we're done. Now you guys have a fully completed website that was made in just a few seconds, you know? So uh, these child themes, they have a lot of really cool animations and features that a lot of other themes don't. For example, you can see this right here is a probably good work of CSS. They might've used that and they probably added that in the child theme. But uh, yeah, so child themes are essentially like pre-made websites. Uh, they just come with a little bit more features than the typical layouts. So over here, I'll exit the visual builder and I'll save the changes.
So that is pretty much it guys for the Divi Marketplace and also for this tutorial. I really do hope this tutorial was really helpful. I did my best to provide as much information as possible, yet not make this video too long. So I really do hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. My name is Daryl Wilson, and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care and thanks for watching. All right, party people, congratulations. You guys are now Divi professionals. So uh, congrats on completing your websites. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you guys like this video, if you didn't like this video, just give me the like anyways. All right, it's been a long time making it. Um, also, if I, if you guys want to give me any feedback, just let me know in the comments, you know. Also, my favorite beer is Modelo. So uh, just let me know that my favorite beer is Modelo. Just to let me know you guys made it to the end. I actually live in Asia right now, and they don't even have Modelo here. It's like, why? You know, they have San Miguel Light. They have Singa. They have a lot of other good beers, but not Modelo. Uh, just send help, send, 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 ship some to me, you know, <laughs> we'll, I'll tip you, you know, but I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.